for Saturday's Champions Night. And Anton Ursland may well see his chances evaporate into the Portsmouth Sunset as Piowetsky kicks off leg five of a max. Whoever wrote him off at the end of yesterday has been made to look 97. like fools. That's a fourth. And a fifth. And a sixth on the treble 19. Only Steve West has achieved this feat at Champions Week. Sebastian Biowetsky, 60. 144, Sebastian, you require 144 points 44. away from perfection. Another one of them. Leads double 12. Whoa. Game shot on the match. The Sebastian, Sebastian Biowetsky wins the game with a nine dart leg. Only the second in Super Series Champions Week history. A bolt from the blue from Biowetsky. A superb moment. His Swedish opponent, Anton. Evening, everyone. Champions Week had lift off earlier on today when Sebastian Biowetsky became only the second player in the history of Champions Week to hit a nine dart finish, the sixth all told in the competition. He is amongst the race in Group C. Tonight, Group B gets underway where the bookmaker's favourite, Daryl Pilgrim, is looking to back up those credentials by lifting the title for the first time. Alongside me in the commentary box for that magical moment, or should I say he was up here on the balcony for that magical moment, was the asset, Paul Nicholson. And for Sebastian in Biowetsky, who struggled for the first three days of competition. It was a much changed day today, but crowning off with that superb nine. You don't get nine daughters in better spots than that. Finishing a game, finishing your day, and then you don't have to worry about the adrenaline levels for anything after that. He could purely enjoy it after that. I'm really happy for Sebastian because it's been a tumultuous week for him with very few highs. But today, what I don't want to go unnoticed is just how good he's been the whole day. Because it wasn't just about that one leg which ended that 4-1 victory against Anton Ersland. There were lots of other things that he did right in numerous games. And I think the most important thing for him coming back tomorrow is that he understands that that does not get him through to Saturday for a crack at the 20,000 pound check. Still got a lot to do. That is the sixth nine data in the history of this competition. Let's round up the previous five, and well, to quote a phrase of some person somewhere, Connie Heenahan was the man who got the first couple in this competition. And the third one there's the only other one we've seen at a Champions Week, Steve West against Luke Littler, and that's the third of Series 5. Yeah, because if you look at the fact that there's six, half of them have come in this series, you might ask why. The standard of play has been better in Series 5, of that there is absolutely no doubt. And I think the weather conditions and the conditions here at the Super Series over the last three months have been at a premium so that the players can play at their best. They haven't been too cold, they haven't been too hot because when even the weather outside was uh, really, really sweltering, we kept it to the level where everybody's able to play at their best. The likes of Pilgrim and Littler and now Sebastian and others have played to their premium and that's why we've got, had so many great legs like that. Well, this is how the table rounded up in the end. He has got company on eight points. The other player being Jim McEwen, who really was the player of the day. He was the most consistent player. He pulled out the bi some of the biggest averages and rightly at the top of the pile. Yeah, I think so. Uh, if you look at the, the grand scheme of the day, Jim really was in control of a lot of his games. And when he was speaking on the balcony with Chris Murphy as well, he looked very pensive and maybe talking himself down. But the fact of the matter is... He's a very good player <laughs> and he continually does things here and has done with us for the last two and a half years. He's just very humble and I think that's a really good quality to have here to make sure that you don't get too excited before the job's done. Talking about humble, we've got some humble heroes in action tonight because Group B is going to get underway in about five minutes time and this is who's in action. Dale Pilgrim was the pick of the bunch in qualification, smashing the weekly qualification record. He's the hot favourite. Can he live up to the billing? Chris Quantock is enjoying a resurgence in his darts here at the Super Series. Kwani will be hoping to swan away with the spoils come Saturday.
Marina Mikkel denied Fallon Sherrick a fairy tale Champions League berth. The solid Dutchman is back for more. Conan Whitehead is the first man to lift this title. He's promised to be back at Champions Night on Saturday evening. Rob Grundy has grown into this week. Can he continue to propel his way on the up by winning a Super Series title on the back of his Challenge Tour win earlier this year? Yeah, some fresh faces and some fresh looks in this Group B this evening. Let's have a look at the tournament bracket and see how things break down at the middle portion of the week. We already confirmed the place of Andreas Harrison. He's the first player through to Champions Night here at the Super Series. He did that in Group A yesterday. We're going to find out two from six on Group C tomorrow. That resumes at one o'clock in the afternoon. But Group B, our focus this evening, where the bookmakers' favourite for the week, Dale Pilgrim's in action, but we cannot rule out the chance of Chris Quantock and Moreno Mikel, who in their qualification weeks played some good stuff, and when it came up clutch, came up with the right answers. Yeah, I think there's a few players this week, even though it is Champions Week, they can profess to be underdogs. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think it's a favourable tag to have. I think when you look at the fact that this is day four, and we've been seeing every single day that Daryl's the favourite and that someone like Conan is saying he will be here on Saturday night. That comes with its own weight. But when you look at someone like Kwani, someone like Mikels, they've just been able to sail through, come in here on Thursday night and say, do you know what? Everybody's talking about everybody else. No one's talking about me. And that's perfectly OK. Well, we're going to talk about Dale Pilgrim some more because this is a tournament outright betting as far as this group is concerned. 13 to 8, heavy favour, but Conan Whitehead not too far behind. And these two battle out in game one. I think they've got that spot on. And they don't always get it right, in my opinion, and to other pundits' opinions. But I think that is about as perfect as the outward betting can be uh, for this one because Pilgrim is the favourite, closely followed by Conan. And the way that Grundy played on Wednesday speaks numbers, and we will talk about those numbers when he plays his first game. Yeah, we'll see Rob in action next up against Moreno Michels. This is the bet builder for this evening's action. Pays just over 7-1 to one tonight. There's a mixture, well, it's pretty much a mixture of everything, really, which probably tells you that there's probably not much to split the five. I like the first one, just based on what Grundy's been doing, and he's trending in the right direction as well. So 4-5 to five to beat Moreno, I like that a lot. Uh, as far as player 180s for Pilgrim getting two or more against Quantock. Again, I like that because his 180 ratio is, is very good. And I think that maybe Quantock could take a couple of legs off him, making that game a little bit longer, giving him more opportunity. And as far as Pilgrim versus Mikels, the handicap betting in that one, well, it takes you to over 7-1 to one for the accumulator. I don't think it's too bad. I think it's fairly accurate. 18 plus, be gambleware.org if you're going to have a flutter on the Super Series tonight. And the first game of our evening session sees the bookmaker's favourite, the man who's harboured all the headlines, the man who's been, well, doing some perfect things. Well, Pilgrim's done everything this week, hasn't he? You wouldn't know if he was three or up or down, and that's a real testament to his character. And that's Whoa, five 180s. Wow, wow, and wow again. I just well make it six, Daryl. Whoa! Staggering. Most important dart on a nine data for me. He's on for it. It's double 18. Go oh, on, it's the perfect the nine flick. dart, and he's been Darryl threatening all day. Daryl Pilgrim, what a sensational finish. Uh, I'm out of Super Series HQ. One hundred and eighty for the match, and record-breaking darts, double sixteen. It's Game destructive. Shot the it's Daryl Pilgrim with Darryl a record Pilgrim. average here at the Motor Super Series of hundred and twenty-two point six nine. Have it. We've given him the build-up. It's now time to see Daryl Pilgrim in action. He plays our first game of the evening against the former champion, Conan Whitehead. I can give you a little bit of an insight behind the scenes here at the Super Series. You may remember that Conan Whitehead has been 
playing with his flights and sending it up onto the balcony. Well, he's actually asked for a spare set back, but he'll be hoping that the darts do the talking this evening against Mr. P. And doing the talking about the darts tonight, alongside Paul Nicholson in the commentary box, it's a very good evening to Chris Murphy. Good evening, Henry. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. And here is the man that most have been waiting for, the favourite, to be the champion, the new champion. But he takes on the first champion at the Super Series. Daryl Pilgrim up against Conan Whitehead. What a way to get first Group leg. B it's Daryl to throw first. Getting the match. Game on. Is our referee Jack Garwood, who had a proud moment of his own officiating that nine dart finish in the very last leg he refereed. Seventy. It was just a few hours ago. About four hours <laughs> and twenty minutes ago, Murph. Yeah, and that's not going to happen in the next one. Lightning won't strike twice, but Pilgrim, of course, one of the players that's had 41. the nine data. And I have to say, it was an interesting chat between yourself and Henry on the balcony because you made a great point. Three of those nine data coming in this series. So, can we say it yet? So before we see the finals match, does that already make this the greatest Super Series ever? I like that being a rhetorical question for about another 48 hours. 108! You don't have long to wait for your first 180 of the night. It comes from the champ. We can still call him that because he will forever be the first champ. And he could be 57. the second two-time champ and could be the first three-time champ. Yeah, Little is not coming back for at least 85. Two and a bit years, hmm. if ever. Here's the scary thing. If he doesn't keep his tour card in the first two years, he'll come back and he'll still be under 20. Now, Daryl Pilgrim's got big designs on progressing to professional status, ASAP, but he, a lot of people now are doing that, but feeling that if they did it without getting a Super Series victory, they'd have some kind of unfinished business. Yeah, I agree with that, actually. Well, that Treble 19 attempt didn't agree with him. Nodded that dad. Didn't agree with the board. I think it a 1 3 8 earlier on today. Conan, you require that 90. Route. What are we going to get from this 90? Double five. Game shot on the first Very leg. Conan Whitehead. It's an opening break for Conan. And with being the favourite comes maybe just a tiny bit more pressure. Second leg, it's Conan to throw it's first. It's a fair bit of time Game on. since we saw Pilgrim do all those bits that week when he was winning week two. But my word, is there anything 100. he didn't do that week? He finished the week with 150 checkout. He had a record average in a win. He had a then record average in a loss. 137. He had a nine dart leg. I think he almost completed the game that week. And let's not forget, Super Series 1, the first Champions Week here 22. in Portsmouth, semi-final, Conan Whitehead 4, Daryl Pilgrim 3. It could have been different. Pilgrim would have gone into that match as a favourite and could have conquered Conan 59. and stopped this story. But Whitehead just would not be denied that night. I suppose we could call them... Super Series heavyweights. Well, he went 4-3, 4-3, 4-3. In his group games, remember, well, one of our co-commentators certainly will remember because he was on the wrong end of it. Well, this is interesting play from Pilgrim. 135. Very clever play as well. Oh, that is, that is great counting from Pilgrim. There's someone who lives and breathes numbers. 100. And I love that kind of counting. 170. Now, are we going to see something special? The fish will not be caught. 89. Conan, you require 139. Daryl had a shot at a 138 in the previous leg. It's a 139 for Conan. You might think the treble 13 is a bit of a risk there, but... He's thinking, I've got this one shot. Daryl, you require 81. And I believe that going 39 there was the right play. Double 18. Game shot on a How second leg. Daryl Pilgrim. Broken back immediately. In what can only be described as a Third very retro-looking Crystal Palace 
Esque shirt. My word, you could probably see this from the International Space Station. Yeah, he's a big Eagles fan. 79. Daryl Pilgrim hails from Croydon. It almost looks like the shirt for Richmond in Ted Lasso. <laughs> a show he's not even seen 43. before. Call yourself a Palace fan and not even seen that show. Well, Pilgrim beat Dom Taylor in his final, who has had a very good season himself. 137. But what about Conan's week? Not bad at all. 89.22 is weekly average for three days. 52. 43% on the doubles for the week. That's impressive. And he's had a grand total of 26 180s as well. He's averaging more than eight a day. 100 and He's playing one less game today. It's only four, not five. Pilgrim with that maximum gets himself down to serious 100. finishing range. That the types of checkouts the players think they will take out. And he might well take it out. Double 16 is the target. 73. Good counting again here from Conan. Needs a 60 to leave a finish. 96. That will you require 32. Pilgrim is swimming in very familiar waters around that 100 average. Did not like that. Does not like that. If he doesn't like the red dart, he's going to hate the blue one. Can he find a way? 16. It would have been a wonder dart, but it's a wonderful position to be in because Whitehead isn't on a finish. Will be after this visit. Might be on a double. 180! Well, it's the dead cat shot designed to put off the opponent, leaving a dodgy, odd-numbered double, but Pilgrim remains unflustered. Daryl Pilgrim. Starting to realise why I was looking forward to this match so much. Four I'll have ten matches Conan's like this first. tonight, thank you very much. Game on. And I'll be one happy camper. I can't help feeling reflective about that first Champions Week when this pair did meet in the semi-finals. Just looking at the semi-final lineup, Josh Payne and Graham Usher both went on to get two of cards following that October semi-final and final defeat for the pair of them. 14. And then the other two players are here on Champions Week in Series 5. Well, there you go. One year on. But can I play devil's advocate? Because earlier in the week... 94. There was an interview with Conan asking him the question about is he a better player now than when he won that first series? And he said 59. he is different, but whether he's a better player or not, that's debatable. But the devil's advocate bit for me is about Daryl. And I'm a big fan of Daryl. I always have been since he won his 59. first weekly title in Southampton. But for someone with all this hype and all of these records here, he still only won one challenge to event. And he hasn't got a tour card for next year via the PDC this season. But I think he's one of those players who's just brewing under the surface, learning his trade. And right now, 92. he's a bit like a firework that's been lit, but it hasn't exploded yet. Maybe he will explode. Just before the 5th of November. 128. Is that Pilgrim's plot? Conan, you require 156. Whitehead looking for 156. Not to be. Options here for Daryl. Does he go 54 for Tops Tops? require 134. Lots of options. Could even look at the 17s here. Two of them for 32. That is Shot majestic. Flag, Daryl Pilgrim. It's a somewhat forgotten route. I like that because it's something I used to do, but it's not about Fifth me. Leg, it's about Darryl his brilliance. First. And that really Game is off. very, very clever. A brilliant insight into the mindset of Conan Whitehead 60. there with his response. He offered the, the fist bump, didn't he, in congratulation, but you could see he was hurting on the inside as well. 43. Plays darts the way it should be played, doesn't he? Ultra competitive, but ultra respectful at the same time. Absolutely. That's Conan written all over that. 
You do something like that to him, he'll appreciate it. It won't be something he will like. 140. But when you're playing someone at this level, you've got to expect them to do things like that to you. 108. Well, that's what he does in response. It's Conan Whitehead's third maximum of this opening Group B battle. What a battle it is to raise the curtain on this group. 54. Considering he's had three 180s and decent overall scoring, he's had one dot at a double in four legs. Yeah, and hit it. 140. Leaves the 138. Pilgrim just over 100 behind. He will rectify that in this visit. 140. You just knew that Coding 140 was coming. 138. Stay. Oh, decided not to. I am surprised. Well, Treble 18 is such a friend to him, isn't it, that even that dart sort of wasn't tempting enough for Conan Whitehead. Well, 106. He is so good at that 54. That you require 107. Why didn't he just go two of them for double 15? Well, Pilgrim will get a dart at a double. And it will be his trusty double 16, which he In nails. Shot. And the match for Darryl a second. Pilgrim. Tum topping checkout, the brilliant 134 put him in the perfect position, and Mr. P crosses a line with a fabulous 107. Pilgrim defeats Whitehead and shows us all why he is favourite. Conan played well in that match. Look at that, almost an average of 98. And he hit three 180s, but only got one dart at double. That's how good Daryl Pilgrim was. Four out of eight for him, including those two three figure checkouts, and the favourite shows us why in his opening match. Second match coming next, Marino McKells takes on Rob Grundy.
Welcome back to the Moto Super Series. That was a little bit granite before the break, wasn't it? Dale Pilgrim, Conan Whitehead. We gave it the big build-up, and it definitely didn't disappoint. Pilgrim winning with two ton-plus checkouts, an average of 96.2 by four legs to one against the former champion who hit three maximums himself. Next up, that man, Rob Grundy, on your screen. Well, he's had quite the breakthrough year in 2023. Challenged tour title to his name, as well as a Moda Super Series title. Up against Marina Michels, who was so solid when he won his week in week three, denying Fanny Sherrick a berth through to this particular occasion. This should be a real granite, solid affair. And Chris Murphy and Paul Nicholson are down in the commentary box. So then, Robert Grundy. Two wins on Monday. Two on Tuesday, but three on Wednesday, and that's how he's ended up in Group B. Moreno Mikel's his opponent dropping into this group, a first appearance for him. The Dutchman takes on the grenade from Hartlepool, winner of a Challenge Tour title himself this year. And first leg, it's Moreno to throw first. Had that Game fabulous on. end to the day when he got into Group B in the very last match, did he, knocking Matthew Dennant out. It was a real 81. battle. In fact, it was four wins, I beg your pardon, on Wednesday for Rob Grundy. So that day for him is what put him in this group, and it gives him an extra opportunity, doesn't it, to, to try and be there 100. on the big money night on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. You think about that Series 1 finals night, you've already mentioned that Graham Usher was there. Graham's from just down the road to Rob Grundy. He'd like to go one better than Usher. But I don't want that performance in game 15 yesterday to go forgotten because 75. it's one of the best performances of the week. He averaged over 102 in beating Biowetsky by four legs to one. And after the way he played today, it actually looks better now than it did 100. then. But he was four from four on the doubles. With a 141 checkout, he was determined to get one of those yesterday, wasn't he? Yeah, it's been a remarkable week already, in fact, and there is still a player we haven't seen yet in Chris Cornsock. But you think about that group, Rob Grundy, in, have, in achieving that win, he finished second in the group in the end. Same points as Conan Whitehead, but one leg better off than 45. him, who in turn was two legs better off than Matthew Dennant. And all three of them were two points, just two points, one win better off than Steve West. It could have been a very different day that we had today. The odd leg here and there really made the difference. And the odd visit here and there can really make the difference. Visits like that, the 171 from Grundy. 95. Rob, you require 100. And what can you do with the two data that he's left? Via that wonderful 171. Moreno's going to get a look at 84. 60. Moreno, you require 84. He's had a 84. long time to wait for this finals week because he won week three. 72. He'll have Robbie to wait a little longer 40. for a chance of getting his first leg of Champions Week. Tops is not the best target for Rob Grundy. Shot on the first leg, Rob Grundy. When he puts one above it, he can block it, so it's important that he goes straight in, and that's what he did on that occasion. He's going to want you to say that every time he's on tops, Murph. Second leg, it's Rob to throw first. Just game on. Again, knowing through the numbers from the rest of the week. An interesting little stat. Andreas Harrison, who played three days, has still got twice as many points 59. as Sebastian Biewetsky, who's played four. He got four points in Group A. He's got eight points in Group C. Andreas Harrison got 24. 60. That's probably going to be worth mentioning on Saturday if Sebastian makes it. But if they play in the final, he, he could still. It, well, it means if he gets to the, if 14. he wins all his matches tomorrow, he'd still be two points behind Harrison for the week. I'm starting to think you're a very big Andreas fan. <laughs> 100. I'm a fan of that. The last start in particular. Somehow sandwiched in. For Moreno Mikels. I'm going to take this opportunity to really laud the doubling of not just 96. Corn and Whitehead on Tuesday, but I want to laud the doubles of everybody this week. For me, that's been the most impressive thing of the week overall. 
43. And as the week goes on, they're getting better. We had 57% on doubles from Conan on Tuesday. Yesterday, king of the doubling, Rob Grundy, 55%. He was 17 from 31 attempts. And I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag until tomorrow. But I can guarantee you, you will be flabbergasted by Biowetsky's numbers on the doubles from today. We will talk about them tomorrow. 100. Well, that was interesting as well that he decided to fill that up then. Rob, you require 135. He's going to start on the ball this time, having declined it last time. He actually felt that the darts in the treble 19 were so good that he could lay it on top, despite the fact that he wouldn't have been on a finish had he missed. 83. Moreno, you require 38. Not the tallest, Moreno. So maybe he's a bit more comfortable with the southern doubles. 22. He might be feeling Rob, very uncomfortable 52. in a minute. He's had four shots at a double in this match, and he's missed them all. Yeah, we didn't see any double shot on the southern second comfort leg. there Rob from Moreno Michels. Rob Grundy is no good at tops, apparently. He's brilliant in this match. Twice he's gone for it, twice Third he's leg, hit it. It's Moreno to throw first. Didn't actually say Game he was on. no good for it at it. I'll just clarify that. I said it's not a good double for him because it's just so easy for him to block it. 180. No shortage of maximums tonight, that's for sure. We've already had seven. We haven't even finished game two yet. Yeah, it's kind of all or nothing for Moreno in this match. One score of 100. And then three 180s. 134. I said at the top of the show with Henry that I think Moreno comes in here with Quantock firmly under the radar because other people have been getting the headlines. 59. And Moreno's heyday as a ranked player in the BDO system was around about 15 years ago. He did have Time on the 45. PDC tour as well, and I saw him plenty of times there. Very softly spoken, always with a smile, lovely to be around. I'm really, really happy for him making it this week. This is a big step for him. I'm not sure what his plans are long term for his darts, but I Moreno, guarantee you, you this: he is made for the Super Series the way he operates himself. Well, a bit all over the place 30. here, and Grundy could. Apply some pressure in this leg. A leg which was started with a maximum, followed with a 134, but since then, the tyres have been slashed and the car's started to stutter. 45 44. and 30. 44. Moreno, Moreno, you require Michaels. 112. Surely you can't lose it from here. Double top this time. Getting and he does it. That's the Michaels. double he won his way through on. 2 1. Yeah, Fallon Sherrick was the. <sighs> Player that Moreno Mikel's beat in his weekly Fourth final. Leg, it's Rob Congratulations, to by the way, to Game Fallon Sherrick. She went to collect her MBE earlier this week. Kind of easy for us to say that he's the only person to have beaten someone with an MBE on route. But in this series, we have seen Trina Gulliver as well. Mm -hmm. Fallon actually learned of. The receipt of that MB while she was here, didn't she? At the Super Series. She's played a big part in this series herself. A nine data to boot a history making one at that. The first woman to produce a perfect leg in a televised 16. game of darts. First of many, hopefully. Yeah, she also became the first woman to hit one in the PDC earlier this year, didn't she? With a 16. nine data on the challenge to it. And she was the first to hit a 170 in a televised match as well against Gabriel Clemens. Yeah. Always seems to be the first to do something, doesn't she, Fallon Sherrick? That's why her nickname should have been the first lady, you see. Because she's the first lady to do a lot 44. of things. I like it. Not everything, but a lot of things. But couldn't get past this man. She would have been here. Well, probably in this group. 97. She had other, other engagements yesterday. <laughs> But Moreno has made it. Can he make the most of it? 92. Got to start 19s on 299. 
Two trebles up top to leave a finish. 99. Good thinking. Just short. Rob, you require 170. Well, no need for Grundy to finish this if he does get the opportunity, which he might, because that's a perfect dart. He's just had a bit of a rush of blood there. 98. Which tells me that he would have gone for it. He fancied it. No one's hit one this week. Best we've seen is 161. 100. And that's harder Robbie than 170. 72. I'm sure we're going to see a 170 at some point. What about 72? For a gap of two. 32. This is tops for the first time. Moreno, you require 100. He couldn't find double top. Moreno Mikels has two darts at it. That becomes one at double 10. 80. On the wire. Rob, you require but On the 40. wire, he's not in the bed. They were super close, weren't they? Kiss the underside of the wire on tops and the outside of tens. Plenty of room to the right hand side. The right, Rob, to the right. Game shot on the fourth flag, Rob Grundy. Yeah, well called, Paul. And we saw from that final flag, angle that to throw first. even though the dart was dangling down, it was only blocking at worst a third of the bed. You premier precision 95. players. Don't just aim for the big targets. You can aim for the tiny ones as well. Surgical stuff at times. Absolutely. I've already seen today 100 just how good some of the players can be when they've only got half a bed to aim at. And that's how good you've got to be. You've got to be able to hit half a double here 60. in Champions Week if you're going to succeed. I didn't dare speak. 125. I was going to come back and say, isn't half a double a single? You should all be able to hit those. <laughs> you know what I mean. He was hitting trebles for fun, and so is Moreno in this match. This is remarkable. Now, his 180 tally is as good as his ton tally in this game. Four tons, four 180s. He's obviously allergic to 140s. 121. Just a shame he couldn't leave a finish from 346. 98. Might pay Rob for the fact that he 75. was on 346. These are the fine margins at this level of darts at the minute. A single 18 would leave him on double top. Uh, double he's had his own battle with. Plenty of hits. Game so shot. there's another the one. Rob Grundy. He's hit it in every leg that he's won. A 4 1 success. For Rob Grundy, a stellar start. He's kind of kicked off Group B the way he ended Group A. And he sees off Moreno Mikels, who had those four 180s in that game and 112 checkout. But Grundy remained rock solid throughout the match, and he picks up the points. 4-1, he defeats Mikels. Daryl Pilgrim also won 4-1 in his opener, and he's back next against Chris Quantock.
Hello and welcome back to the Moto Super Series. So before the break, we saw Rob Grundy get out of the tracks, flying, getting the better of Nikena Moreno Miguel by four legs one in our second game of the evening session. Well, we've now seen 11 of the 12 winners and riders for Champions Week, and we're about to see the last take to the Yoki now. Chris Quantock, it's a first appearance for him here at Champions Week, and he's enjoyed a bit of a resurgence in his darts here at the Super Series over the last six months or so. Played really solidly to get through into this position at Champions Week, and he's going to have to be his best. He takes on Dale Pilgrim. He's already got a victory under his belt against Conan Whitehead this evening. And only one this evening, Phil Bars caught up with Kwani. Chris, here we are, Champions Week. How are you feeling ahead of tonight? Uh, excited. I um, literally hope I just do well. You know, you had to wait a little while for this night. What's the preparation <laughs> been like and has the excitement been building? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's been building. Uh, preparation's probably been not as great as I would have thought I'd like to have but um, obviously played a lot of um, league darts and that so I should hopefully do the trick. <laughs> what was that feeling like when you won your week to book your spot here? Uh, it was amazing yeah I enjoyed that um, it was brilliant I can't, well I couldn't believe it at the time it, was, you know, it happened I was sort of the underdog really wasn't I? Looking at your group it looks a tough assignment in this group B what's the plan ahead of this evening? Uh, just win uh, hopefully I uh, I'll win enough to get through, and, and that's just, I'll take one game at a time. All eyes are on Daryl Pilgrim. He's the man that everyone's talking about. Are you kind of happy with that? that? Maybe you can just go under the radar and, and not be noticed? Yeah, hopefully. Um, it happened last time, so let's see if we can do it again. And just looking ahead, what would it mean to you if you could book your space in Champions Night come Saturday? Um, it would be amazing, you know. I'd be happy, and hopefully, if I get there, we, we, we get the win. Do you think this could be the springboard and the catalyst to get you back where you think you belong? Hopefully. Um, I've been been close the last few times at Q School, so um, hopefully this will just uh, keep me on a bit more. Chris, look forward to seeing you this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you. Well, hopefully this will be a good game. Chris Quantock taking on Daryl Pilgrim, and both are coming in in great form here. Quantock has a six-match winning streak coming into this evening. Daryl Pilgrim, if you include... The end of his Group A campaign, then his finals night when he won back in week two, and that first victory tonight, the 4-1 win against Conan Whitehead. He's actually won his last 13 Moda Super Series matches, which is a remarkable tally. And Chris Quantock, the 32-year-old from York, will have his work cut out, Mr. Nicholson. Yes, indeed. Very sparkly jewellery that we're seeing on the stage tonight. We've got the eyebrow ring from Mr. P. And a little bit of bling-bling from Mr. Q. First leg, it's Chris to throw first. Game on. I wonder, you know, how many of these players this week have thought about what they would do if they won £20,000? 140. They'd probably give you the stock answer of, well, I'm going to take one game at a time and I'm just going to see how far it takes me and hopefully I get the win. You've thought about it. 96. Yeah, there is some uh, perceived humility going on in some of the interviews, I think. Andreas Harrison got through and still was aiming for Group B. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris Quantock puts all those darts exactly where he aimed them. And they're new darts. 58. Because when he won in week eight, he was using an older version of a Nathan Aspinall dart. It's been well documented 30. over the last couple of months that Nathan's darts have been going on a diet, gradually getting slimmer and a bit more streamlined towards the end of the barrel. And it just so happens that Chris Quantock is following the leader. leader by Chris, you require 151. Taking the World Match Player Champions new darts into the arsenal. He's had a 140 and a 180, but he's then followed that with scores 41. For 30 and 41. He does have the darts against Mr. P here tonight. He will not have them tomorrow. 100. Got to make the most 110. of having them against someone so good and dangerous. It's going to be tops. 90. That will require 147. 147 not going to go, so Quantock will return for double 10. 99. Chris, you require 20. Speedy Slinger 
Chris Quantock, and he can bounce that in off the barrel. Game shot on the first leg. Chris Quantock. Very tidy indeed. He was Second one of the leg, real Daryl to throw first. good feel stories. Or should I say feel good stories? Of the Super Series in Series 5 because... 44. You think about some of the stalwarts that lost in finals. Like Quantock, who took out Bradley Ruse in his final in week eight. That was his second consecutive final, the young Dutchman. But Quantock, well, it's been very up and down the last five years, hasn't it? Had a tour card for a couple of years. 92. And then through COVID, didn't play much at all. He wants to be back. And now that he's in a Champions Week, I think he's very close to being 177. back. 177! There was a time, you know, Paul, when he was on the Pro Tour, we, we commentated on some of the floor events, and I thought he was really going to kick on and be a top, top player in the PDT. It never really materialised for, for Quantop. But what was great to see was when he did win his week on week eight, his dad, very good dart player in his own right over the 57. years. 57. In the back of the arena, just taking it all in and show what it means to not just Chris himself, but the people around him. And sometimes it's difficult to live up to expectations when you've got the name of someone who's graced the Chris tour before. 127. What's to see? Can't be better. Bullseye. 102. Well, Pilgrim himself could 88. be taking aim at the bull at the end of this, but that would require him not hitting a treble with two darts. And the way he's playing, you'd expect him to do so. Well, he has hit a treble. And he's hit another one. And now he needs double eight, and he can't 72. find it. Chris, you require 25. First game tonight, Pilgrim was 50% on the doubles. Game he is now 2 nil behind. 50% doesn't cut it in this game because he's already had one dart at a double. Leg. He missed Chris it. Throw first. Game on. who breaks there, has had six darts already. And that's a mark of just how good the scoring has been. 58. From the Whippet-style Yorkshireman. Well, you've seen everybody now, Paul. You said at the top of the show that you agreed with the odds compilers that it was Pilgrim and Whitehead who were likely to occupy 30. positions one and two. But in Group B, three go through. So out of the other three, from the early signs, who would it be you'd be saying would be riding shotgun through to finals 43. night? 43. I think it's hard to say it without Quantock completing a job so far. I think at the culmination of this game, we'd have a better picture. But Grundy looks good, doesn't he? he looks 100. really good. I'm still maintaining Whitehead because when he says he's going to make it, I believe him. And he lost with nearly a 98 average in that game against 58. Pilgrim. So it's not as if he played poorly. So I'm still going for Pilgrim. I'm still going for Whitehead. And I'm still on the fence with the other one. But at the minute, Grundy's made the best statement. 100. It'll be interesting to see how it does pan out. It's already been a 60. dramatic week. Uh, Group C looks well set for a real race tomorrow. And don't forget to join us for the culmination of the Qualifying stages for Champions Night. Smart stuff from Pilgrim there, by the way. But yeah, we're back on air at 1 p.m. live on the Moda Super Series YouTube 41. channel. The best thing you can do that you require in order not to miss anything is subscribe. And you'll see loads of finishers out of the top draw. Pilgrim was attempting one there. Starting to sound like a Harry Enfield character there. Loads 89. of finishes. Pressure could be coming. 100. That will you require 56. Admittedly, towards the end of leg three, Quantock is averaging nearly 82. Sixteen. If he takes this 141 out... Chris, you require 141. Pilgrim is in peril. He's not going to take it out, but Pilgrim is yet to pop a double in this game. He's had 36. three darts so far. He's Darryl not found any. He was 50% in his opening match. Oh, that looks very inviting, doesn't it? 
didn't it? Double ten. And he 20. still hasn't found the outer ring. Six Chris, you require 105. This is like a big single from the Joshua tree by U2. He still hasn't found what he's looking for. 57. That will require 20. Or will this be the one? Game shot on the third leg. Daryl Pilgrim. Pilgrim halves the deficit. He took a, a long old while to get there. But that'll feel like the sweetest Fourth thing. Fourth leg. It's Daryl to throw first. Game on. I'd still love to be here watching these darts, even with or without you, Murph. <laughs> 99. You too, Paul. You too. <laughs> I think that's the perfect end of that little section. 121. Do you think it's curious that he's gone to those new darts just because Nathan has? Or do you think because he's sponsored by the same company that having them maybe at his disposal might unlock an even bigger level that 52. he hasn't seen in the last year? He may have even spoken to Nathan and, and, and got his reasoning and then just agreed with it. One hundred and eight. Seems to be working right now. Eighty. Second match from Corny. And he will play the last game of the night against Conan Whitehead. That'll 43. be interesting to see where everybody lies going into Friday night. Just wonder what it'd be like, you know, in Champions Week if we invited 100. fans in on Friday night as well mm -hmm. for qualifying. Oh, it would be, well, it's already something about Fridays with nobody here makes it so tense. But imagine actually having the audience there in the hush of tension. The 140. dramatic silence. Chris, you require 100. Like Depeche Mode said once, enjoy the silence. And enjoy the 80. fact that you are Darryl, you require possibly coming back for 3-1. And now you are for a double that he's already hit in the match. 47. Somewhat expertly as Chris, well. you require 20. This kind of opportunity might not come across too often over the next couple of nights. Daryl Pilgrim not really at it in the game. 10. But we know that he can Darryl, pull you out require a plum 120. from anywhere. Is this going to be the tide-turning finish? Treble 20. Double 20. 80. And Pilgrim cannot Chris quite pull it off. 10. This game is being played at a six-visit level. Not something I thought I would say. Six. He's had a chance to go 3-1 up. Darryl, you require If it 40. goes to 2-2, two, two, unfortunately, Chris has got nobody to blame but himself. He's had his chances. He's missed nine of them Game in the game. The and it is 2-2 two, two now. That could be a moment that he looks back on. Chris Quantock. He still has the darts. He still Fifth has leg, the advantage. It's Chris to throw first. But how game big on. it could have been. He could have been throwing for a 4-1 win. Instead, now it's just to keep the lead. 22. And look at Daryl Pilgrim's reaction. He's now ready. He's now smelling blood. I'm not sure what you think is the key to success for Daryl this week. I know that the amount of darts that he's played over the last few months since getting to this Champions Week, it's not in doubt. He's played on the Pro Tour. He's made a quarterfinal on the Pro Tour, admittedly losing to a Yorkshireman in the shape of Joe Cullen. But that was good for him to have that experience because with someone of his talent, he desperately wants to get to the Tour. One hundred and thirty-seven. But my point about this week is, with him being the favourite, and with him having ambitions of maybe making the tour next year. Eighty-four. Is there a possibility that he could want this too much this week because he's been close before, and like you said before, Murph. Fifty-seven. If he does go to the Pro Tour in twenty twenty-four without a title here, of a series note, he will think that. He left here with something 96. that he should Darryl, have had his name on. 170. Does he have his name on this finish? I suppose it's a question I could ask you, Paul, having been, you know, at the top of the 98. pile once upon a time. 
here in the UK, but certainly over in Australia, going into tournaments as favourite. Did that bring a, a 60. pressure? That all you require, 72. I really liked it. It was a great feeling. I just enjoyed playing well. Just like Daryl does. And sometimes you've just got to go for it's it. It's on the fifth leg. Daryl Pilgrim. And he's gone for it there. That's a much improved leg in 15 darts. Quantuck has let this one slip. And you can see how he feels about it. Sick leg. It's Daryl to throw first. Game on. Here's one of the biggest things, though. Dart players don't like the idea that they've let one slip. 140. If they do, they want or like the idea of having another try at it. Here, 83. sometimes the clock ticks very quickly because you look at someone like Owen Bates. We're not going to see him again. He's gone to the tour. He hasn't won a series. 91. I think one of the problems here for Chris Quantock is that when he did squander that opportunity, he just 100. knew it in that moment and it affected his next visit, didn't it? And then that visit gave Daryl Pilgrim the confidence and optimism that he required. It almost felt that when he missed those darts to lead 3-1, the rest became inevitable. It's a strange old situation that he finds himself 98. in. 98. Because Chris was expected to lose this game based on likelihood, based on odds and statistics and form. 80. But if he does lose this game, 4-2 or 4-3, maybe if he'd said that before Dart was thrown, he would have said, okay, I can work with that. I can, I can beat other people. But based 45. on the way the game's gone, that all you require, 145. You won't accept it at all. He may get away right here and now. He won't be in this visit, but Quantock himself is not on a finish. 96. Well, it's not too bad for Daryl Pilgrim. It's not a guarantee that he's going to take the 49, but 58. based on the way he finished Darryl double 12 in the last 49. leg. You got a fancy, he probably will. And he does like double 16. Seventeen. But he can't get it, so there's a chance for Chris. You require 117. His highest checkout in this game is actually still only 25. This isn't going to be easy, even if he gets the treble. 93. He gets the treble with his last start, 32. but it may be the last start he throws in the match. Game shot. It was the, the last match. start that he threw Darryl in the match. Pilgrim. And he let the lead slip. He just has to rebound when he comes back to the hockey in game number five when he takes on Rob Grundy. As for Mr. P, it's all going to plan, isn't it? He's won his first game by four legs to one. And he's won his second by four legs to two. There's a bit of a chasm between the averages from game one and game number three for him. But he doesn't care because he's top of the table with two wins from two. And his win streak now is 14. We'll talk more about that in the second half of play when he plays Marino Wakels. After the break, it will be Conan Whitehead against the aforementioned Mikels.
Luke Little may have won it the last two times, but Conan Whitehead was the first person to get his hands on that magnificent Modus Super Series trophy. He's promised us that he will be co two time champion one day. Will this week be his week? Well, he got his Group B campaign underway of a 4 1 defeat to Dale Pung. In fact, both players lost their opening matches by four legs to one. Well, Grundy making pay of Marina Mikkel. So the pair go toe to toe in our fourth game of the evening session, being watched by. Paul Nicholson and Chris Murphy. Thank you, Henry. Well, Corey is looking for two, so I suppose C or two is looking to leave his footprint on Series 5. Marino McKells in round number one for him. It was a 4-1 loss to Rob Grundy. Whitehead knows a thing or two first about a 4-1 loss. Conan to throw first. Game on. He lost to Mr. P, who has now gone into four points. Now it's time to rebound for somebody. But who will it be? Champions Night closing in. Conan Whitehead 100. hoping to be in the mix to get his hands back on the trophy. In fact, not hoping. He certainly will be there. He's been saying it all week. 45. He will make Saturday. No doubt about it. Henry said that he has reclaimed 60. one of those stem and flight combinations that he threw towards the balcony earlier in the week. I'm not surprised. Seen the state of some of those flights he's using. 140. One of them's actually got a chunk out of it. Look at it. Top left corner. It's actually got a... It's like he's been biting it. 100. Oh, we saw something rare. A visit ago from Moreno Mikels. That was a 140. Didn't get one in his first match. Got four 180s. 100. Might not get any more. That might be it. One 140 all week. Rest tons in 180s. Doesn't matter as long as it works. 140. Well, that works for Co. He. Hunted down the maximum himself there. 100 As Mikels gets another five for the now. Interestingly, Whitehead in hunting down the maximum. Denied himself a two data here. He could have gone for the bullseye 25, left himself 96, a much more makeable out shot. 65. But the 180 from Mikels was Marino, sublimely timed. Game on the first that. leg. Moreno Mikels. 13 data. Conan is already thinking, why are people Second doing this against me? Because Pilgrim game on. was sublime against him in game one. And Mikels has been sipping from the glass of brilliant darts juice as well, because now his 140s are flowing. He's got two of them. Just a slight look for the first time, really, there on the face of white of concern. Because I think you're absolutely right. He started to get that... That thought of, why always me? 60. He's wearing the Terry Jenkins t-shirt. Why always me? Why do people always play well against me? But Terry had a point, though. People used to play really well against him because he was so good. Particularly in finals. The White are just trying to keep calm and keep composed. The Moreno 84. robbed the previous leg. With a brilliant four dart spurt at the end of it. 60. It's all right for a couple of minutes to think, why are people playing so well against me? But you got to fight back. 41. And sometimes with Conan, not that he needs much in the way of extra motivation, but if we were to possibly say at the end of tonight 60. that his participation in Saturday is doubtful and he was to hear it I think we'd see even more aggression from him more pep 100 yeah, if you required, did hear me say that I'd hope to be a good 25 yards away at least <laughs> he's a puppy dog really but on the dartboard he's an absolute monster 79. Moreno, you require 76. Single 16 for tops. For 2 0. Game shot on the second he leg. He goes 2 0 up with an 18 dart leg. 
perfect on the outer ring, and he is suffocating Conan with Third very good play. Third leg to throw first. Game on. Conan in his first game had one dart at a double. In this game, he hasn't had any. Well, White was shaking his head as he approached the hockey there. Now, quite often you will see Conan White react behind his opponent, but just before he approaches the hockey, he did himself that little G up. On this occasion, he was actually walking to the hockey himself and shaking his head in disbelief. And do you know what will infuriate a player like that 59. even more? When it's coming from a player that is not very reactive at all. I assure you that this is correct when I say this. You get more reaction from a winning or losing leg from paint drying on the wall than Marino McKell's. He gives you nothing. 59. He's always played like this. One hundred and forty. Yeah, I think it's a, a game to just keep an eye on Conan all the way through. We know Moreno will give nothing away, but Conan's giving quite a lot away in this match. Eighty-five. Conan, you require. Don't think 96. he'll be giving this leg away from this position. I don't think so either. Game's and on he the doesn't. Third leg. That's a twelve daughter and a little bit of stamping in the sand there from Conan, as if to say, right, let's go. To the Fourth beaches leg. and see who's best. First. Game on. Is there anybody in Super Series darts in the last 18 months or so who is as good 58. at a darting scrap as Cohen and Whitehead? I don't think so. I don't think so. We talked about this earlier in the week. If 60. we could compile a four-person countries team for England, Scotland, Wales and the Netherlands and beyond. For me, Conan would be the England captain. I think he'd be the perfect motivator for an England squad, which would involve, for me, Steve West, Daryl Pilgrim, and one other player. Well, he had the perfect motivation 100. for his Group B campaign. He was actually surprised by his family last night. They, they turned up here in Portsmouth to see husband and daddy. 139. And it was such a motivation for him last year, wasn't it? The birth of his daughter, Ada, to, to go and win that Super Series title. 140. Very much a family Marino, man. Marino, you require 167. Not just there doing it for himself. 57. You might think to yourself, how is it a team effort when he's up on that stage alone? The preparation, the hours, the days, the weeks, the months... The years, in some cases, eighty-one in preparation Marino, you for things like this. It's all to do with the people that you're around who motivate you. Moreno's at it again. Watch the white head shake if this Game goes shot in. On the fourth leg, Moreno. Well, it's not just a head shake. It's arms aloft. He cannot believe it. He's the Mario Balotelli of darts first. right now. Game on, and that tells its own story. He's a point above what he averaged against Pilgrim, and he's still losing. 60. Got to try and sip from a different cup, Conan. Why don't you average 75? You'd probably win one. Well, he's hit every single double he's gone for in this game, Moreno Michels. 60. Checkouts of 36 off the back of a 180, then 76, and now 110. Somehow he's kind of making it worse for Whitehead, isn't he, with everything that he 56. does? 56. The one sort of last insult would be to take out an enormous finish to win the match. 60. On the bullseye, which would make it even worse. Well, that's the script written from the comms box. Gordon Whitehead will still be fighting to upset that script. 60. Sometimes you just can't keep it in and you've got to vocalise it to get it out of your system. For people who haven't watched Whitehead 18. before, he's not actually shouting no when he, he misses or has those moments. He's he's referring to himself, shouting co. Oh, there's some vigour in this one. 108! No reaction to the maximum. 
It's like, that's what I should be doing. Energy management is what it is. Because of his experience, and he was talking about this yesterday. Conan, you require 145. He's played more matches here than anybody here this week. And he knows how to pace himself. Aggressiveness. And 65. vibrancy. It has to be tempered to make sure you don't peak too soon. But if he doesn't get a move on, 96. being in the top three by the end of that, you require 80. a bit of a tough ask. This could be tricky. Now, how, what's he going to leave available here of this double? Well, we've got to pick a side. That's very gettable for him from the right-hand side. It's about an eight-foot shot. 60. I thought you got that. Moreno, you require yeah, it was 107. Close, but the way this game has gone, he might as well just walk down the stairs now. Every shot like this has been hit. Every double has been hit. But this time, he can't get a go at one. And Conan White had must take this opportunity. Conan, you require 20. Game shot and on the fifth does. leg. Conan White It's the second leg of this contest. Far from over. But he must break Moreno in this one. Sixth Otherwise, it Moreno will be no first. points at the halfway Game point on. of Thursday night. Still wouldn't rule him out. You can never rule him out. Such a street fighter that he is. 96. I reckon he'd make a good character in Street Fighter. 58. Sometimes it's not about the size of the character in Street Fighter, right? It's about being clever and getting hits and draining that energy bar of your opponent. And that's exactly what Moreno's done in this game. 45. He's been draining the positivity of Conan with excellent finishing and very decent scoring. 58. Also from Conan's perspective, how how many times can he get hit? He has been hit many times in this game. He has let it affect him. We've seen that. But he's still in the match. And there are many players that might not be at this point. 45. And the scoring power of Marino McKells is starting to wither a little bit. And this is where Conan's got to be all over him. 43. And he's not. He's not even under 300 after nine. He's got an opportunity to get ahead of Moreno here, and he hasn't taken it. 58. Great dart. Fantastic bedfellow. 140. Can't quite fill it up. This is still in the balance, this leg, and therefore this match. 100. Still only got two 140s. Had he got two more, then this game could be almost done, if 60. not definitely done. Moreno, you require 150. Well, both players are on enormous finishers. We did say that the final insult would be a supersized checkout, and it could happen. 117. Well, Conan, I think you was getting ready to nurse the wound. Can't inflict one. And the way that Moreno 65. has been finishing in this game. Moreno, you require 40. He looks good for this. Double top. Game shot. Under in it match. goes. Moreno and it's Mikkel. two defeats for Conan Whitehead, who shakes hands with Moreno McKell, shakes his head, though, afterwards. It's been a, a really devilish display of doubling from the Dutchman, who hit four out of five attempts. And Whitehead's woes continue in the early part of Group B. Our first ever champ at the Super Series is going to have to try and turn his night around when he takes on Rob Grundy in a couple of games' time after he goes down 4-2 to Moreno Mikels. Grundy is in action next. He faces Chris Quantuck.
Bob Grundy and Chris Quantock is our middle match of the session here in Group B at the Modus Super Series. Before the break, we saw the former champion Conan Whitehead defeated by four legs to two to Moreno Mikel. So he could be in a little bit of pale. But what's going to happen in our middle match of the night? Let's find out. Chris Murphy, Paul Nicholson. Thank you, Henry. Yes, it's starting to go south for Conan Whitehead. He'll have the chance to turn it around, but it's two men from the north about to do battle now as York's Chris Quantock takes on Hartlepool's Rob Grundy in the fifth of our ten tungsten tussles tonight. And first we leg both is Rob to throw first. Promise in the opening Game matches, on. but Grundy. Well, he went and got the job done, didn't he? A 4-1 win against Moreno Michels. Quantock was in such a promising position against Pilgrim, but it all kind of fell apart for him. Yeah, it did, unfortunately. 140. I think everybody's shown promise at some stage tonight. And one person who's going to be shaking his head more than anything else is Conan Whitehead. Now, we've already got a change of equipment for Quantock. He's gone back to the old Aspinall-style bombers. So let's have a look at that. 96. Slim Aspinall darts in game one. Chunkier ones right here. These are the ones he used when he wanted to win group oh, week number eight on that Saturday night. Now, he did have a very odd day when he won week eight because in the afternoon he was playing in the afternoon with Tom 95. Sykes. And it was for the Yorkshire Strap. In the amateur dart circuit belt system, he lost his belt 96. in a belter of a game, no pun intended. Robbie require 170. But he ended up winning the night. Strange old day. Well, he thinks he can get under that. I don't think he can. He's not a limbo dancer. 58. He almost did get under it. Would have been some dart, but maybe it was unwise. He could have gone down for the 19s and teed up a double if he found a couple of trebles 51. going that route. Robbie require 112. A lot on this first start in this equation as well. Now that's very good for him to find the treble 20, which he does to leave double 16. 80. No drama in not getting it with Quantock still over 200. Being over 200 is never a good thing when your opponent's on a double. Robbie require 32. I love these stacker players on double 16. We're not going to see the, the sort of ladder climb to it on this it's occasion. On the first but he leg, finds Rob Grundy. The flat upstairs, if you like, in double eight. We're on a bit of a streak here tonight of three Second games. Leg, it's Chris one to throw against first. the darts. Game on. That has no bearing on what will happen on this. You might think just because the last three 81. games have gone against the darts that maybe this one will as well. It's got absolutely no bearing on it. Not at all. The end of this, it will be the halfway point of the night. And if Grundy is on four points, just like Pilgrim, he's going to feel like he's got the ideal start here in this group scenario. And when you consider how well he played on Wednesday as 100. well, his confidence is going to be as high as any point he's probably ever felt when he's been here. Well, those who have been with us all day, well, I'm sure, like me, just 96. love the contrast in groups B and C because I think in group C, you can't get through on the first night, but you can be 100. out of it. And in group B, you can kind of get through on the first night, but you can't really be out of it. Usually there's someone within two or four points above you in that third spot, even if you lose 84. all your matches, and it's very plausible that you turn it around. In this series, Murph, we've seen Jared Cole win four games on a night in Group B, and the next night, 66. he's lost all four, and only just squeaked through, so it, that actually proves your point. But Jared Cole's not here. 60. He lost Pretty on his final night. 154. Now lots of players will be preparing for the start of Series 6 next week. 94. One of those series that's going to bridge a year. Interesting as we take a couple of weeks off around Christmas. 161 is on. It's the biggest one of the week. Andreas Harrison's record of having the biggest checkout of the week 
remains. 137. For now. Chris, you require 60. Fifty. Rob, you require opportunities 24. keep coming for Chris Cornetalk, and opportunities keep being passed up. He's now missed eleven darts at double tonight. He's not even completed his second game. Game shot on his second and leg. Rob Grundy Rob hits Grundy. double six, which comes with its own story. <laughs> yeah. Earlier in the week, he had twelve left and decided, in his infinite wisdom, third leg. It's Rob to throw first. I can't believe I'm about to say this because I've never seen Game it before on. until this week. He went four double four. Bust it, then hit double six in the next visit. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever try that again. Famous last words. 100. I love double six, and most right-handers do love double six. 93. I've never seen anybody split double six apart from Rob Grundy. I'd really like to have a word with him, actually, about why he did that. What 100. was going through his mind at the time. He might have just missed by a mile and styled it out. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yeah, he might have missed double six. 140. By five inches. It's not inconceivable. I've seen Rob cross through a dart this year. He was trying 60. to get a treble 19 and he missed the board. And he missed the wheel on the outside of the board as well. It made Gedwin Price laugh. I'll tell you what, a couple of times in this match, we've seen this 41. perseverance on treble 20 from Rob Grundy when he's put darts above it that don't lie nicely for him. I think maybe that's something he needs to bring into his game. He's switching more, switching earlier when he does put one above that treble 20 bed. When he puts one below it like that, inevitably, he finds a 140. 99. Rob, you require 101. This is going according to plan. This is a dream scenario. If he can click 81 more. Double 12. 89. What is it about him and the corners Richie of the doubles? Richie require 120. Been happening a week. Do you know a moment ago when I said he would never ever split double six again? <laughs> could, it, could he think about something so silly? That was only just 88. out of its target. Rob, you require 12. Right, if he goes four double four here, then I'm going to just walk out and never come back. <laughs> he might do it now. <laughs> See? Game right at the, the bottom leg. of the double Rob again. Grundy. Here's the mirror of hitting doubles right at the bottom. Fourth I've leg is Chris to throw to first. pick with someone on social media, you know. Game I got... on. A post yesterday on X or a reply to something that we were talking about with Rob Grundy about his stems 100. being the shortest I've seen from anybody here at the Super Series and on tour. And somebody said, with a picture of their setup, yeah, have a look at my stems. They're shorter than his. Great darts by Rob. In fact, the stems that are used by Rob and this certain person were exactly the same. They were just a different colour. 19. <laughs> so, them being black stems as opposed to aluminium looking stems doesn't make them shorter. They're exactly the same. This is a great closing out of this game by Grundy. 140. 180. Followed by 140. Small stems, but big numbers. 58. Sounds like a tagline for selling his darts. Doesn't even have his own darts. These look like those code Gary Anderson style darts. You know what the... 55. The odd dot in there everywhere. They're supposed to be some sort of code in there. He likes them. They work. 100. 126 Robbie away from a 4 victory 126. in the first bagel of the night. There's no reason for him to go for the 19, so he doesn't. 66 remaining. Treble 10 would leave him double 18. 86. Instead he tees up tops. And this would be, you'd have to say, the emergence of Rob Grundy as the player of the group so far. He was 100. the player of Wednesday. Rob, you require 40. Fast becoming the player of the group on Thursday. Double 10. 
And that Shot. And the match is a 4-0 win for Rob Grundy over Chris Quantock, who missed a couple of doubles early in the match and then didn't get any more. As a little look over his shoulder, he wants that match to start again. But Grundy's night has gone swimmingly so far. A 4-1 win against Moreno Mikels earlier on, followed by a 4-0 win against Chris Quantock. Grundy, like Daryl Pilgrim, has won both of his matches and Pilgrim is in action next against Mikels. Welcome back to the Super Series. We are midway through our evening session here in Portsmouth. It's Champions Week in Series 5, and that is what they are all playing for come Saturday evening. This is what we've seen so far tonight. Five games come and gone. Three of those five actually gone against the darts, and it's been perfect starts. As far as Dale Pilgrim and Rob Grundy are concerned, the asset, Paul Nicholson, is alongside me up here on the balcony to assess what we've seen so far. Well, Dale Pilgrim, we gave him the big build-up before play got underway. We gave him the big build-up before the week began. And so far, he's lived up to that billing. Yeah, I think his first game, he'll be very happy with it. Uh, maybe not so much with the standard of his second game, but sometimes in these group scenarios, you're going to have to win games where you don't play your best. But that first game with Conan, it was gripping. 
in a great way. And that's the kind of game we want to see here this week. I just wonder how many times they're going to play each other. And it's going to be a minimum of two. I like to think it's going to be a third at some point. But uh, here tonight, he's scrapping against Quantock in this one, as you can see, but taking full advantage of the misses of Chris, who hasn't really got going since he won his first couple of legs. So the misses from Quantock, the hits from Pilgrim, and this sealing a 4-2 success to make it 2 from 2 as far as his evening is concerned. Well, Grundy is the other player to have a 100% record tonight. And as the days are moving along, he's getting better and better. It's the right time to have a good trajectory. Do you know, I think we've got to the right point of the week because I haven't seen Rob Grundy play that much over the last year. I think we're only just starting to get to know him. And the best compliment I can pay him at this juncture is that he's better than I thought he was. Mm -hmm. And I just think he's a super player. I think he's got things to learn, but where he's at right now, he's very, very dangerous. And when he's beating people like Chris Quantock to nil, that gets my attention. And I think his doubling so far this week has been improving day on day, but his overall performances have too. Elsewhere, Moreno Mikel's got the better of Conan Whitehead in our fourth match of the session. Is the former champion in a little bit of trouble here? Not yet. I think sometimes with players like Conan, uh, they will play well and lose, and it will be frustrating. That's what's happened tonight so far. However, when his back's against the wall, he tends to play his best stuff. His back isn't against the wall just yet, but he needs to get out of tonight with something. Otherwise, it will be against the wall all of tomorrow. Well, this is how the table looks then at the halfway point of tonight's proceedings. As you can see, well, Grundy and Dale Pilgrim, four points on four. Marina Mikel's one win, one defeat. Conan Whitehead and Chris Quantock still looking to get off the mark this evening. So, game seven sees Dale Pilgrim in action against Marina Mikel's. And Marina's kind of still playing to that standard we saw when he qualified through to Champions League, where he's just playing at such a steady standard. And when the chances are there, he by and large takes them. Yeah, I don't think he's uh, on Conan Whitehead's Christmas card list at the minute because those finishes uh, in the first three legs of that match, they were just superb. And he is a steady Eddie player, but when you're not noted, and I, I say this with a caveat at the end, he's not noted as a big 180 scorer. And here he's not a, a big 140 hitter, but you've got to make up for that by doing something else brilliantly and that's finishing that's what he's been noted as however he has been hitting 180s tonight not a great amount of 140s but i think some things have been clicking well for marino tonight and if he can get a win against pilgrim here that will fluff his confidence like no other thing he can possibly do here well, let's see whether he can fluff up his confidence. A bit like a pillow in and around midnight. He takes on Dale Pilgrim, joining Paul down in the commentary box. It's Chris Murphy. Hello, Chris. Going for the pillow talk from Henry Deacon and Paul Nicholson. Let's get back to the arrows as Daryl Pilgrim takes on Moreno Michels. A meeting between the favourite to win the week. Pilgrim just ready to complete his practice starts. He's lived up to that mantle as well. He's won both of his games so far. Michels was in punishing mood against Conan Whitehead. First leg, it's Daryl to throw first. Game on. Referee Jack Garwood gets the game on. And would it be an extension of that winning streak for Daryl Pilgrim? Remember, he's now won his last 14 matches on that stage. 43. Could be a record equaling run by the end of the evening. Very, very interesting 85. to keep our eyes on that. See if Pilgrim can match more records, maybe break more records by the end of his Group B campaign. And I've now got company in the comms box, and I did have company in the comms box while you were upstairs. Uh, a certain player popped in to have a little chat, Conan Whitehead, and basically said exactly what we thought he was thinking. Why me? 55. Why is it happening to me? Yeah, that was a song by PJ and Duncan, wasn't it? If you say so. Yeah, it was one of the follow-ups to <laughs> Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Why me? It's a crying shame. That 81. was the chorus. Well, no use crying. Just got to get yourself out of the rut. Well, there was, a, there was a positive side to it because he did say, I can't keep playing like this and 100. losing. So he doesn't feel that he's playing in a rut. He feels that he's 
performing well enough to win matches. No, it's a fair point. He is playing well enough to win games. But when you are playing well and you say that statement, of, I can't keep playing like this and continue to lose. Here's the problem. He's already a quarter through his matches in this group. The clock is ticking on the amount of matches you're going to play. And Moreno's at it again. <laughs> yeah, he's got a ton and a 180, but no 140s. Yeah, it's not just you, Conan. He's at it against everyone. The maximum gets him onto a nice finish. 81. He will get a dart at least Moreno, the bullseye here 81. to break Pilgrim in the opening leg. Forget the bull. Let's have a look at double 12. It's a juicy dart, that. Oh. 57. But he couldn't manage to use Darryl, it. you require 56. He almost threw that one too well. Game shot on the you know first what? leg. Conor Whitehead's thinking right now. He's thinking, Marina would have hit that double 12 if it was me. Right, can I employ a bit of narrative here? I think Second it was leg. Reach it's Robinson that first. said on that stage after Game winning on. a week that he had an aura of greatness. Do you think that we, we've seen tonight Chris Quantock and now Moreno Michaels have opportunities against Daryl Pilgrim. Do you think his aura of being the favourite, being the main man, the man to beat, is actually affecting them? 125. If I have to be honest, I'm going to say no. I don't think there's that much of a, a confidence 43. bubble that somebody carries into this place above anybody else. If, if Phil Taylor walked in here, maybe. But Pilgrim, yes, he's the favourite this week. 54. But then again, Luke Littler was the favourite in the previous series. Was he carrying something like that? I'm not so sure he was. These people are beatable, but they are marginally 60. better than others. I, I know that, that Daryl averaged 96 for his week, which was ridiculous. But that was a long time ago. He could have easily lost a game tonight. I think particularly on a Champions Week as well, those 96. margins are going to be smaller than a, than a normal week, aren't they? Where you will get players that are, say, qualifiers through the ADC system that maybe have never played on a stage before against a, a big name who's 81. been there, done it, and won everything. Absolutely. I think if anybody's going to have an aura on the stage, it's going to be Conan. Or possibly Steve West because of what he's done in the pro game. 97. P Pilgrim hasn't done what Steve's done. He hasn't actually done what Conan's done. He hasn't played at Lakeside and made a quarterfinal. So there are 99. excuses to the contrary. That will require 129. Well, this might give him that kind of aura if he takes out a 129, one of the tricky finishes on the dartboard. Going double double, is he? Well, I'm assuming he was. Someone got a telescope to see where that one is. That one was way high. 105. And now Marino, he's probably thinking, why didn't I just do that? With my second dart. Now he's going to have to bail himself out on a treble here, but not that one, pal. I'll tell you what Daryl's becoming. Darryl, he's becoming the king 24. of the ghost dart at the back of the stage. He was wandering around Game shot on the, the back of the stage Darryl after Pilgrim. that. Treble 16, like a zombie. With his arm in the air, just like that. Third leg, it's Daryl to throw first. Yeah, Game more on. practice from Pilgrim. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a good result for. It would be a good result for Conan White, wouldn't it? Keeping Moreno Mikel's on two, because then with a game in hand, he's only 47. one win behind him. What would Conan say if he was live with us right now? It's not about first or second. Or third, it's about 81. just being part of the top three and being there Saturday and then doing the job. That's what he's done before. Now, Pilgrim, in many weekly campaigns, has dominated qualification groups and not got the job done. 96. It took him a while to get his first weekly title. When he did, he got the knack. Last thing he said, Conan, before 100. he went back to the practice room was, I'll be there, talking about Saturday night. I still don't doubt him. One hundred and eighty. I don't doubt that either. Ninety-five. If I ever see you on the stage, I'm expecting you to be in a Sheffield Wednesday style shirt. By the way, Murph. Oh, well, it won't be this season. 
140. Marinos from Rotterdam, which is very famous for 134. the Ahoy Arena, isn't it? Mm. That will you require 38. Incredible Premier League night, which is soused in orange. Game shot on the third That's a third wonderful, Pilgrim. wonderful leg from Pilgrim. 13 data. And he's back doing what he was doing in game one. Four flag, it's Marino Flying to like throw an first. like an eagle here at the Super Series. 98 average, three out of three on his doubles in this game. And 45. a couple of opportunities that Mikel's missed in the opening leg were punished. And then he hasn't had any since. Where have we seen four out of four before this week? And indeed with Mr. P. That record that he brought 85. in week two had stood for two and a half years. That Jason Askew average record. And he broke it twice in a day. In half an hour, in fact. 43. He played one match and broke it. Then he had a game off and he came back the next game and broke it again. Fifty-eight. Must be something about players from the southern part of London or towards the county of Surrey because that's where Jason Askew was from. Still is. And that's where Daryl's from. He's from Croydon. 60. Looks like he might get the job done here. And... 108! Try and get away from Mikel. However, he's always there with a maximum or two. He's got seven for the night. He's only in the middle of his 43. third game. Moreno, you require his hit rate on 180s is very impressive. But it's the in-between stuff that is letting him down. 24. His doubles have not been bad tonight. And only hit one from seven in his first game, but he was still finding his feet when Grundy was grinding him into the ground. 100. Moreno, you require 109. Can he avoid the whitewash? Only if Pilgrim doesn't 57. have a final trick up his Darryl sleeve. You require 158. Could even go up 254s and bull here if he wants. 98. Moreno's not careful here. Moreno, you require 52. He could be staring 4 0 in the face. He wasn't careful. He was careless. Game shot but on he the fourth leg. Out Marina McHale's. Fifth leg is Daryl to throw first. Speaking Game as on. a player myself, you're desperate to get that shot at 60 because you just want to get this done. 100. And Pilgrim will be finishing up against Grundy tonight, which at the minute looks like a fairly good tie. Yeah, you would think if either of those players go through the card, then that would be them safely 90. into Saturday. Although not mathematically, but as good as. I always say you want to get to 10 points and just be doubly sure, just in case something strange happens. 60. But for eight points not to be safe in this group, both Whitehead and Quantock are going to have to start 83. taking points off other people. 83. That's a perfect start. He's got 99. a lot of fingers on the dot. You look at his grip. It's towards the back of the barrel, even on the stem. Index finger, middle finger, and third finger all taking part. 100. That third finger is on the point, which is very long. This is really good timing from Daryl Pilgrim. Run, Daryl, run. 80. He doesn't seem to have any texture on those points, so that smooth point was really clinging on for dear life. 92. But it might serve Darryl him well because that 62. treble 20 has left him 62 for the match and a 4-1 win. Oh, yeah, you know I love this. <laughs> you know I love 62 starting with a 45, a 1 and a double eight. 
No score. He doesn't love that. That's not what he wanted. Moreno, you require 136. His intention was to be on double 16 before he threw his first start. Well, here comes Mikels. 120. Well, Daryl Pilgrim would have thought he was taking Darryl, the you Mikels require then. 62. All the way back to 62. This time it's double 18. And Big this shot. time and he gets match. it done right. Daryl Pilgrim. 4 1 to Pilgrim. And the favourite is in a very good position, winning three from three. And his win streak goes to 15, which means that when he plays Robert Grundy in game nine tonight, he could be owning another record, albeit alongside Jim McEwen. We'll get onto that in game nine. But as for now, that one goes to Mr. P by four legs to one.
Welcome back to the Motors Super Series. All eyes on the prize here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And before the break, Dale Pilgrim was a bit like an earth, wind and fire track. He'd like to remember the 2nd of November. That's a third consecutive victory and that winning streak goes on and on and on. Next up, it's the barbarian Conan Whitehead in action up against Rob Grundy. Grundy looking to make it a hat-trick himself. Paul and Chris are down in comms. I can't remember that one. November, but yeah, it would be maybe a memorable one for Daryl Pilgrim and Rob Grundy tonight. He's had an excellent evening himself. First Conan leg, Whitehead it's Conan to throw first. Is the man Game for on. whom this match matters most? Do you remember Murph? The third of September. <laughs> that was the day that we started here in 81. 2022. Almost 14 months later, it will be. 14 months in about a minute. <laughs> so there you go. Since we started 134. here. 134. So much has happened. But it's not about what's happened before. It's now about what happens next. Because as we go to the midnight 41. hour, Conan Whitehead needs Friday to deliver because Thursday hasn't. Yeah, sometimes that little mental... Switch can help, can't it? I had a bad Thursday, but if I have a brilliant Friday... Kind of what is it? It's still very much in his own hands, isn't it? But if he loses this game, it starts to not be. You think about the amount 16. of points that you can grasp from a group situation based on how many games you've got left. And as it stands, he can get 12. It's not 16 anymore. And I think if you compartmentalise tonight before you even throw a dart 60. on Friday night. What's he going to be happy with now? I don't think he'd be happy unless he's got four points when he goes to bed. 85. Yeah, but as you say, in that, in that position, he can get 12. 12 is a guarantee of going through. We think that he can afford to lose one more game, but I assure you he does not want to do that tonight. 150. That's the start that Whitehead would have been afraid of. Uh, Rob Grundy has come into some real form in the last couple of days. 140. Worked his way into the week Rob very, very 32. well indeed. And he's really motoring now. 13 on the first start leg, Rob for Rob Grundy. Grundy. That's an average of 115.62 in the opening leg. And Conan Whitehead was thinking that maybe his luck would change. Well, second leg, it's, it's Rob not to looking throw like first. it will right now. He's going to have to Game go on. and get this. He's being forced into four visit legs. Every time he looks up, his opponents are doing very good things. 125. But as far as Rob's concerned, his incremental improvements game on game this is incredibly sustainable. 140. It's not like he's going out there and averaging 105 and then slumping to about an 83. He started with an 88 average. He's gone up to 92 and a half. 140. And it wouldn't shock me if he goes to about a 95 or a 96 at this stage. He looks really comfortable. Yeah, he's showing how good he is. I mean, 92. A, well, you know as well as anyone a real plethora of talent in the northeast region actually glenn durant mentioned rob grundy before he'd even played here as one of those players who could really do well 85. and he's had a great year a breakthrough year you'd have to say not just here at the super series we've seen him win that challenge tour play in pro tour events as well and certainly not disgrace himself well think about who he beat on route to that title and Robbie how strong the challenge tour has been this year we'll Outline that in the next leg because he might even take the 151. Oh, interesting. So on a shot like that, he's decided before he's even thrown a dart that he's going to lay up. 119. Yeah, that's that's pretty rare, isn't it? On, on a shot that you can finish and you're not going to harm yourself by not going for it. To do that, I, I want to leave double 16 is effectively 32. what he's saying there. For another 13 daughter. Game shot Tell you what, the way he's playing right Rob now, I'm going to get me some of those stems. Well, yeah, Conan White said he's got the look of a man who's lost a tenner and found a fiver. Third leg, it's Conan to throw first. 
Game on. And if he didn't have bad luck tonight, he'd have no luck at all. I think he's cutting the figure of someone who's lost a tenner. Yeah, and not found anything. <laughs> 100. Now let's talk about that win at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes on the 12th of August. Pretty much everything changed for him around that time. Because he beat Owen Bates in the 60. semi-finals. We know how hard it is to beat him. He beat Vitislav Sedlak of Czechia 140. in the quarterfinals. He's actually gone on since then to win a challenge to himself. And he beat Arjen Konterman, who's been here as well. Useful player from the Netherlands. But in the final, he beat Christian Kist. 100. Who, in the last couple of days, has solidified a place at Alexandra Palace as a pro to a qualifier. So there you go. Yeah, that's an indication 100. of how good he is, and so is this performance. The average, over 105. Whitehead is going to get an opportunity, though, to just end this 45. trend. Conan, you require 161. And he's got a couple of goes from 161. May use a bolt. 57. That was the intention, but he's, he's kind of okay there, hitting a 17. Yeah, better than a small single. I suppose Rob's got the luxury of a, a leg off here. It's a bit of a reprieve 100. here for Conan. Conan, he you can require 104. For a couple of visits to finally get a leg in this contest. He hasn't had a sniff so far. <laughs> I mean, oh no, ninety-three. An analyze that, Paul. You can't, can you? <laughs> Trying to make something happen. That's the only thing I can grasp a hold of right there. He's done it in his qualifying week. In week four, he went for bullseyes 43. with three dots in hand, that kind 11. of thing. But he also missed the single. Game he does not the lose the leg. leg. Conan Whitehead. And you don't learn from situations like that when you still win. You learn when you lose legs like that. But sometimes you just got to try something different. Fourth leg, it's Rob to throw first. You hit it, you look like Game a genius. Off. If you don't, you can come sometimes come off a little bit silly, but no harm done. Yeah, just to explain to anyone who was confused what he did there on that 104 65. attempt, treble 18 went in. Leaving him 50, usually a player would go 18 for double 16, maybe 10 for tops, but he decided to go straight for the ball with two darts in hand, hit the 25, and then, when just trying to tidy up, he missed the big number. 94. Meaning he had to waste a dart on his return. All's well that ends well for Whitehead, but a very strange decision at this point in this match, on this night, on this week. 140. Sometimes the unconventional can be leading you to greatness. You know how much of a great player Conan is. 121. I'm not sure his timing and his rhythm there was perfect. It was slightly ragged on dart three. But what I mean by that is what Rob is using here with these short stems, it's unconventional. How many players 16. do you know, Murph, that use stems like that? One. Exactly. Same here. It's a bit like asking, how many players do you know 140. Who told the hockey with both feet? I tell you what, it would be some feature, wouldn't it, to get Rob to throw with Conan's darts and Conan to throw with Rob's darts because how many of Rob Grundy's stems would make up one of Conan Whitehead's? 45. Probably Conan, you require 146. It might even be more. They're long old things. Sometimes the unconventional 60. can be brilliant. Nothing more than Phil Taylor. His eye dominance was left eye dominance for a right-handed player. That is seen as unconventional, but it didn't do him any harm. 100. Well, Conan Whitehead is quietly turning Conan this game around 86. here. This is a big exchange coming up. Whitehead will be hoping it's not an exchange. He'll be hoping to take this out, but he's made it more difficult. 85 remaining. 75 remaining. 30. Well, he's not even thinking now. Rob, you require 91. Could have left himself on double nine there. The lie 
is not bad at all. And it is the bullseye. 66. It hits the lie, but it doesn't go. Conan, you require Into 56. the hot spot. It's a top spot for Whitehead. Fails to find it. Double 10. 36. Getting a little bit snatchy, Rob, a little bit shaky, 25. a little bit jittery. He's had his chances here. And when we say that, you can only blame yourself for missing. Game shot on the Grundy does flag. not miss. And it's 3-1. Conan is very, very close to being in trouble in this group. Fifth but leg, it's still it's in his first. hands at this point in game time. On. His final game of the night is against Chris Quantock. He hasn't won yet either. 140. I just wonder if that could be a little bit of an eliminator of sorts come game 10. Well, I'm going to ask you the question now. Yeah, he's fine. Assuming he loses this game. 59. Does he then want Quantock to actually win before playing him? Because that keeps Mikel's on two points. Yeah. Yeah, he does. That's a great point. 80. Bunch it up. And then he can almost win a separate table. Pilgrim and Grundy could be in the distance. And then you've got Mikel's, Quantock and Whitehead fighting for one spot. Sounds a bit like... Oh, that's right. Yesterday, people were going for Group B, which was really competitive. 45. And then he was in that fight himself. Conan Whitehead. He still will feel he's in this fight. It's never over until it's over. And look, it's only a couple of holds and then the break in between. Do you remember who said those words? It ain't over till it's over. Sure you'll enlighten us. There's Lenny Kravitz. 60. Well, it could be pretty soon. Grundy, having found a treble there, should be first to a finish now, and he will be having found another. 140. Another thing Lenny Kravitz said was, are you going to go my way? Conan might be saying that to himself right now. He'd love a 140. 100. Robbie requires to settle for the ton, but Grundy's now got a match winning opportunity to join Pilgrim on six points. Whitehead thinks it's all over. 72. Conan, you require. But he gets 76. a chance to reprieve. Can he dig deep and find something? He beat Grundy the first two days of the week. My four legs to three and four legs to two. He Game could still beat him by Go four legs to three hand. here in the early hours of Friday morning. Which is exactly the result that Rob got yesterday. Sixth leg, it's Rob to throw in first. what was a very good Game tussle. On. Grundy started this match spectacularly, but his level has dropped. If Conan Whitehead can get a break here, 100. suddenly he becomes favourite to win this darts match. And of these two players, who's more adept? to playing at this hour. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Grundy come through Group C when he won his week? And then he 43. played prior to midnight in winning his week. So if I am correct, this is his first game here at the Super Series in the early hours of the morning. This is late. 134. And it's not the usual, but for someone like Conan, who's done it many times, it'll feel extremely normal. Well, you can see Whitehead's reaction here. He's putting darts below the, the treble bed. It's forcing a switch to that 18 segment. 120. Didn't work out in the previous visit. It worked out absolutely perfectly in that one. He needs Grundy to have a trebleless turn, and then he needs to jump 60. on it. He's got the first part of that equation. There it is again. That small 20. 60. The only bright side is that he's only a ton away from a finish this time, but... Which is probably why he didn't go for the 18s that time around. Correct. That's just good board management. At worst, you've got to be one treble away from a finish, which he is at the minute, but Grundy is... 
137. One treble away from a double. Well, it's going to have to be something big and then reliant on Rob missing, which hasn't been a, a reliable tactic tonight. Did you just call Grundy Rob Reliant? Inadvertently, perhaps. 60. But he's Rob got loads of time 70. now. And Conan Whitehead, in terms of the opening night, might be running out of that. Oh, oh, well, that was so close to being a real mess, being a bust. 38. But Conan Whitehead can only look and think, why am I not in a position to do anything about this? How many times this week have we seen Grundy go for things like double 10, double 8, and he's been finding the bottom corners because he's under-delivered a shot. 100. He's very lucky not Robbie to have busted his shot. 32. But at least now he's got three darts to beat Whitehead for the second time this week to make it 2-2. Two -two. Game shot and the match. And that's what he does. Once again, Conan Whitehead, he was shaking his head at the low darts. He exits the stage sharply. He knows he's got real work to do in his last match now. That will be the last match of the night. He'll take on Chris Quantock. Conan Whitehead may well need to win it by then. Rob Grundy has won everything so far. A 4-2 victory over Whitehead makes it a hat trick. And coming up after the break, it's Moreno McKells against Chris Quantock. Welcome back. This man in your picture here, Chris Quantock, is in search of his first win of Champions Week here at the Moda Super Series. Defeated 
in his first two encounters. He's looking to get on the board against Moreno Michels, who, as far as his night is concerned, one win, one defeat for him. And he got the better of the reigning champ, oh, the former champion, shall I say, Conan Whitehead last time out. As far as Whitehead's concerned, there's three defeats and three yeah, on his opening night of Group B. What's going to happen, though, in this game between Quantock and Michels? Let's find out. It's Chris Murphy, Paul Nicholson. Yeah, thanks, Henry. It's been an interesting night indeed. We've got a bit of separation happening already. And we will have a game between Grundy and Pilgrim in game nine. First leg is Moreno to throw first. Game on. Who's the chief going into Friday night in group B? But the interesting part of this group is no longer with those two. It's about the other three, isn't it, Murph? And this could 100. be the most important match because if Moreno Michels wins it, then two are on zero and he's on four. And that is a... 42. A bit of a gap. A bit of a gap to bridge in a four-game night tomorrow. To prove your point, then, Conan Whitehead, who has completed 58. three games, will be cheering on Chris Quantock here because he can affect Quantock in the last match, he can't affect 59. what Moreno does in his final game of the night. Yeah, well, if that is to happen, then Conan White could actually still finish the night in the provisional qualifying place just by winning that one match. It's possible. If it goes the other way, that last match is probably going to be a, a battle to see which 100. one of that pair are still just about clinging to the cliff edge by the fingernails. 60. What does it tell you that Quantock has gone back to the original setup at the start of the night? Uh, it tells 59. me that he is. Moreno, you require 143. I think it's a bad sign. 100. Sometimes getting a new set of darts can confuse you. There's nothing wrong with the old set, it was a winning set. People who 83. change their equipment after they've Moreno, won. You require it puzzles the living heck out of me. Never change a winning team. Game shot on the first That's leg. A winning Moreno double for Moreno Mikels and the nightmare start for Quantock. It's only a, a hold of throw for Mikels. First. Paul Game Nicholson on. rightly points out there is a, a kind of a sign of a player being unsettled and. One hundred and thirty-four at Champions Week should be a time when you're feeling assured. If you aren't, you're going to be exposed. 60. Because this is supposed to be a week where we have the best players up against each other in every match. 59. You don't have two chances like Sebastian Biowetsky has had this week. Terrible Group A campaign. 85. But safe in the knowledge that even if that happened, he could bounce back in Group C like he did today. 57. You come straight into a Group B scenario like this, like Moreno and Chris are doing, and the fact remains that it's urgency from the off. This, these 96. last three matches tonight are, are pretty big. You can have a battle between Rob Grundy and Daryl Pilgrim for the perfect night. You would say whoever wins that can pretty much 51. be assured of a place at finals night on Saturday. And then you can have a battle between two players at the end who are yet to pick up points. Although, if Quantock can turn this around, it would be... 100! A battle for third place, really, between Whited and Quantock at that point. So we better get going quick here, Chris. Moreno, you require 160. Listen to your fellow Yorkshireman, Mr. Quantock. 58. Because Chris, you the require clock 60. is Quantic talking. Well, at least he's got a clear look at a double here. Game shot on the second leg. Chris Quantock. It is all square to hold. Remember, it is Quantock who would have to find the breaker throw in this bout. Third leg. It's Moreno to throw first. Game on. He hasn't got a decent nickname, has he, Quanny? It's just Quanny. Yeah, there should be something to do with the speed. 95. I think he's a PC player. Quickly, Quanny. They just call him TikTok. But I suppose there's a great deal of 
96. Copyright involved in that one. I was talking about his initials 45. when he was playing his finals night. Have you ever heard what CQD means? And I don't 40. mean Chris Quantock Darts. Well, go, go on. CQD was the distress call for when the Titanic was going down for Morse code. Okay. 140. He'll be hoping it's not distress call time here at the Motor Super 180. Series. 180. My dart will go on. Too good. 57. I'll be hoping to still be in this because he's kind of been sinking himself, hasn't he, this evening? 57. Moreno, you require 160. I won that one to eight attempt in the previous match. Hit the treble 18 perfectly and then come very, very close 45. to getting a bed fellow. What can you do that this time? you require 128. Sometimes you're better off getting the single 18 here. A 90 left. Doesn't have to go 54. 56. Could say the same on the Moreno, 119, you 119. You? Sometimes you're better off getting the single 19. Yeah, you're not going to leave the bullet if you get the treble. That 99. treble, I meant. Chris, you require 72. Had you got the treble 19, it probably would have been the bolt. Double top. That's better. The third leg, Chris Quantock. Turns this one around, and after being 1-0 down... He finds himself in front. Fourth leg is Chris to throw good first. About this. Game on. He hasn't really averaged well all night. 77 in his first game. After taking the first couple of legs against Pilgrim. 96. He was plundered into the ground by Mr. P after that. And then 80 in a 4-0 loss to Rob Grundy. So 44. Right here, aver averaging 80 again. It's not happening standard-wise, but... In a 86. game like this, just try and scrap your way through to get those two points. It doesn't matter about the average. He's got the break he needed. That's the important thing. Now he's just got to back it up. 100. He got himself into this position, this kind of position, don't forget, against Daryl Pilgrim earlier in the evening. And then... 46. It was squandered. It was let slip. And as soon as he missed the opportunity to lead that match 3-1, he looked like he'd already lost the match. 125. It became a self-fulfilling prophecy. Is he throwing away the opportunity 25. to lead this match 3-1? It looks like it. But then again, the leg is only half old. 85. Well, he was 101 behind before these darts. He's going to be in some kind of... 96. Finishing Moreno, range, it's similar finishing range. Ninety-seven. Might have to Chris, go. You require this might have to go. It might. Not quite. Eighty-one. Moreno, you require fifty. He has hit his biggest finish of the night in this game at seventy-two. Chris Quantock. Is he getting look at seventy-one? He isn't. Game shot on the fourth leg. This one's tied. The more I look at this table, the more I'm convinced. Fifth leg, it's Moreno to throw first. That McKells will breathe very clean sighs of relief at four points, 60. looking down on Whitehead and Quantock if he gets the result here. He will view four points as a massive result considering the strength in this group. 34. I think he was one of the players that has hardly been spoken about ahead of Champions Week, Moreno Michels, but he's putting himself 100. firmly in the mix to make it to Champions Night. 100. Quantock did the hard work. He got the break of throw. He's going to have to do it again. 40. Moreno's the kind of player who has hung around some big hitters in the game in times gone by. 
And he is a player who has played in some big 100. tournaments. He's been at the World Masters five times. He's been to two Lakesides back in 2006 and 2010. 100. He's been to the PDC World Championship as well on one occasion back in 2014. Great experience. 93. But he's never really gone deep in anything of that sort of ilk. I think you'd have to say it, with all due respect to his three BDO titles 16. in France, Hungary, and Holland, that winning here might have to be the biggest title he's had if he was to do it, considering the company 96. he's in and how much Arena of an underdog he currently is. Quantock's got himself in a good position here. 41. Different Christian reaction. 78. So when he threw away an opportunity against Pilgrim earlier tonight, the best reaction, the fight back, the Game bite back the from leg, Quantock, Chris Quantock, who now will throw to win this match and get himself off the mark. Don't call it a bite back. Six He's leg, it's Chris hours. to throw first. Game on. can hear a little bit of noise in the practice room, which we are positioned next to. And it was 140. Conan Whitehead appreciating the fact that Chris Quantock is, is winning this match. So again, the analysis that you gave earlier that you felt 99. that was what Whitehead would have wanted seems to be correct. I'm not taking credit for that one. You actually said it off the air and it made me think about it. And 51. I'm fully on board with what your philosophy was on this one. Well, Conan seems to agree. But yeah, it would mean, how you put it, that there'd be a little... Almost a 81. second league table, a three man fight for one position, third place to cling to the coattails of Messrs Grundy and Pilgrim. I suppose 84. with the way that things have gone this evening and into the early hours, if you were to ask Conan the question right now, would he be happy with that? I think he'd take it. 125. Well, he could, uh, we said it, he could actually be in third place come the end of the night, as unthinkable as that might be. 140. Even to him right now. Yeah, but then we have forgotten about the fact that Quantock could possibly just go bananas against mm. Conan, like most people have tonight. 140. That's a great shot for Moreno. Require He's in position in case Chris misses double 16, which Game he doesn't. And the match. That's a Chris great Quantock. 14 dart leg. That's a good result for him. Moreno's going to have to settle for two points throughout his four games for tonight. Plenty to think about before he comes back on Friday night where he will start his campaign in group th in game three with Chris Quantock, who has got one game left tonight against Conan. Let's have a battle to see who's the king of Thursday night then because it's going to be Grundy and Pilgrim next.
perfection could well be just four legs away for one of Rob Grundy and Dowell Pilgrim this evening, both having won their first three matches of the evening session. The victor of this one will have completed the card on night one here at the Super Series. He was the bookmaker's favourite going into this evening's action, Dowell Pilgrim, but Rob Grundy has got better as the week has gone along here at the live lounge in Portsmouth. Could he well be peaking at the right time? That's a question for the boys in the comms box. It's Chris Murphy and Paul Nicholson. Yeah, he certainly made his move, didn't he, Rob Grundy, on Wednesday when he had a four out of five day in Group A. He's now on a three out of three run in Group B. This is winning form. There's no question about that, however the player is producing it. But this will be the acid test, won't it, for Grundy, taking on the favourite to see if he can actually be the man who goes through the card at the expense of a man. First leg, it's Rob to throw to first. Game on. The record for winning streaks here at the Super Series. Yes, he is. We've waited until now to really hype it up. But this is another opportunity for Super Series 16. history for Pilgrim. 15 straight wins coming into this one in Super Series action. If he makes it 16, he will join... The current 93. record holder for the biggest win streak here with us in either venue, which belongs to Jim McEwen. Now, he did have a dog to make it 17, and that would have given him 15 wins out of 15 in a Group A situation. He missed it and lost to Josh Payne. So, can Pilgrim 100. get the win here and create another slice of history for himself? Yeah, last player to beat him, Scott Taylor, in the middle of Group A on his winning week, week two of this series back in August. Taylor 20. got the better of Pilgrim in a, a last leg. Uh, sorry, 4-2 Taylor won that one. Since then, Pilgrim's had wins against Denny Alderkalter. Went on to beat Addy and Conterman a couple of times. Beating those two Dutchmen. He also got his revenge win against Scott Taylor. Darts like that didn't happen very often during that run. Also, Justin Smith was in that group. And then he, of course, went on on finals night to win all his matches, seeing off Smith and Taylor again before getting the better of Older Coulter again. And 81. then a different Taylor, 4 0 in the final. Dom. He's won all three of his fixtures this evening. And he's hunting down yet another record here at the Super Series. 140. Rob Grundy could be the opponent he beats to equal that record and then the opponent he beats <laughs> to break the record. Yeah, that's such a good point. Because they were playing game two later on today. That's somewhere around about 20 past 10 p.m. local time. 95. Is that all you require? First part of the 60. equation is a break of throw in the opening leg. 60 points away from it. 40 points away from it. Gets it. On the first One leg, to Pilgrim. Pilgrim. So far tonight, these two have been very evenly matched. Second leg, it's Daryl to throw first. 90.13 in his first three games. Very steady. 12 out of 26 on the doubles, which is very good. Pilgrim, 89.64 for the night. 108. 12 from 28 80. coming into this. But now he's 13 from 29. That's really, really good on the doubles. And when you consider the fact that he started leg two with a maximum, like Rob, this game is starting to go into overdrive. You don't get the trophy for the nine dart, so that comes at the end of Saturday. We have seen a nine dart finish today, by the way. If you weren't watching this afternoon, 48. Sebastian Biewetsky producing perfection in the very last leg of the session. Do check out our social media channels. All appear on the bottom of your screen right now 100. at MSS Darts and, of course, the YouTube channel where that leg and if the whole session can be watched in full. I also like the moment that Sebastian and Anton had. It actually showed 58. just how much it meant to Sebastian to do that because he's had a nine darter in a UK Open before and now he's got one on the Super Series stage and Anton... He was part of that moment, and he made the moment 95. even nicer by being so warm and congratulatory when that double 12 was hit. 
And that nine data at the UK Open, by the way, against the other player in the group today, they got four wins. Jim McEwen. 58. Rob, you require 126. This is a finish that Bioweski's hit twice this week. Oh, that is going to be so difficult for Rob Grundy. Half a bed. And he almost found a way through. 58. He can imagine Daryl Pilgrim 150. doing his day job, can't you? Just standing around and just ghost darting <laughs> it the whole time. Maybe um, we should just start this. Pictures of Daryl Pilgrim around the world doing the ghost dart. You're next to the Taj Mahal. And the Sydney Robbie Harbour Bridge. 68. Next to the Petronas Towers. I think he was a supermarket worker at one point. He used to pretend to put things on shelves before he actually did it. What was he? He wouldn't <laughs> stack the shelves. He'd 52. actually throw the cans of beans on the that shelf. Now you require 64. Well, he's looking at a checkout here. Double four. Game shot on a second uh, leg. Double takes his chances. Grip. That's what he does. That's why he wins so often here. A two-leg lead and halfway through this match. A match that would cap off a perfect night and would equal Third leg. It's a record Rob to throw for the first. longest winning streak at the Moda Super Series. He has got an identity, hasn't he? Got his own hairstyle with that somewhat diagonal parton. 60. But he's no Josh Rock. He hasn't got his own pizza slice yet. You might think I'm crazy, but that's actually true. 60. Now what does he... What's the rock slice topped with? Probably 180 pieces of pepperoni. Forty-eight. It is not working out here for Rob. I wouldn't be surprised if he was to have a game off because he's been on it for a good two and a bit sessions now. And Pilgrim is very much on it. 139. This is a mid-90s average. Doubles are good. And that's what we expect from Daryl most of the time. I think it's about time we put pressure on Daryl, actually, because at this stage 99. of his career, because he wants to take the next step, winning this week is very important to him, but also he is known very well for playing against some very big opponents these 132. days. 132. He believes he's a world-class player. It's about time he proved it. Well, he's one of three players to have made it to three Champions Weeks. Daryl Pilgrim, Steve West, and Matt Clark, the others. He's one of two people here this week who have topped the PDC Players' Championship averages by playing one two. game <laughs> Darryl, in a you season. Require the other one being Matthew Dennett this year. Did beat the world number one, didn't he? Just... A week or so ago, Michael Smith was seen off by Pilgrim. Robbie require 114. Yeah, that'll do you the world of good. No pun intended. 54 needed for tops. And Pilgrim is not going to miss double 18. Not playing like this. Rob Grundy's pulling himself to pieces here, and Daryl Pilgrim's pulling him apart as well. 58. Daryl, you require 36. For a 13 dart, break a throw. Oh, Game it shot makes the third it look leg. so Darryl easy. Daryl Pilgrim, who's averaging in three figures in this match. He's three out of four on the doubles. It's a really... Fourth leg, it's Daryl to throw first. Game on. Splendid end to his evening, and it could be a 4-0 whitewash win, and you'd have to say, Paul Nicholson, that if Daryl Pilgrim does get that next leg, then I'll see you Saturday. Yeah, I can't see a scenario where he doesn't. Get through. To be fair, you've been saying that since the start of the week. I have, and I'm not 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 alone. That's for sure. Lots of people have been saying that it's going to be four people battling it out for two spots because we think that Pilgrim's in too good a form not to qualify, and so far tonight he's proving it. And the odds compilers have agreed. What I found remarkably interesting 58. was the fact that Andreas Harrison was already in finals night, yet Daryl Pilgrim remained the favourite to win it. <laughs> that says it all, doesn't it? 60. I wonder which records he doesn't hold at the Super Series. 
that he'd like to have. I know it's obvious to say he'd like to have the most tight. 139. But if you think about this logically, he's now 167 points away from a 4-0 win and been very close to automatic qualification for Saturday after one day. 59. That will you require but this might be his last chance of winning here. Absolutely true, and that's what he wants to have his hands on come Saturday. Deciding against going for the... 131. 167. Again, because he's playing this well, I can't see him missing double 18. And when he was winning in week two, he barely missed it. That will you require 36. Well, he hit it for a 13 darter in the previous leg. Game he hits shot it for a 14 darter in that leg, there. and it's a leg that sees him win 4 0 and equal the record for successive Super Series wins, taking his tally to 16. Joining Jim McEwen on that tally, a 4 0 whitewash win for Daryl Pilgrim that sees him go through the card, wins all four of his matches, and pretty much puts himself at finals night on Saturday. He'll be back tomorrow to try and complete the job, to try and break the record, but what a way to end his evening. However, the most important match of the night might not be the one between the top two. It could well be a match towards the bottom of the table as Conan Whitehead faces Chris Quantock, and that is coming up after the break. Welcome back to the Motor Super Series where we're joined up here on the balcony by Dowell Pilgrim. Dowell, many congratulations. Four wins from four. Happy enough first night? Yeah, you can never complain about four out of four. I mean, 
couple of games I didn't throw that great, but can never complain about four out of four. You say a couple of games just iffy in the middle from your perspective. Why do you think that was the case? Just, um, just didn't feel as comfortable, just rode my luck a bit. But the win's all that counts. So tonight, and I'm not sure whether you're aware of this, but you've made a little bit of history here in this competition. Now, you've won 16 games in succession here at the Super Series. That equals a record with Jim McEwen. And when you play Bob Grundy tomorrow night in the first game, you've got the opportunity to hold the record outright. Yeah, I, did. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. I didn't realise it was that many games that I'd won the drop. That's quite, quite impressive, really. <laughs> What's the secret with you at the Super Series? Third time here at Champions Week. You're on this massive winning run. You're hitting ton plus averages for fun here. What's the, what's the secret to the success? I wish I knew. It's just confidence. Once you get that game going, you feel like you can't miss sometimes. Have you felt that this time there's a bit of pressure on your shoulders? Because a lot of people going into this Champions Week have been talking up your chances because of what you've done here, because of what you've done elsewhere in the PDC. Have you felt that different weight of expectation on your shoulders? Um, not really, because I always feel if I can throw my game, then I feel like I win, but it doesn't always happen like that. So, eight points day one going into tomorrow. I suppose trying to make sure there's no room for complacency, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I mean, I've done it a few times, one four out of four on a Thursday, and they made it difficult for myself. So, yeah, I know I'm not through. I'm in a great position, but I know I'm not through. You've been to Champions Night before. You sampled it before. How much would you like to be back there again? Oh, 100%. Got to go third time lucky. Got to be third time lucky. Could well be third time lucky for Mr. P. Well, it's four from four as far as his night is concerned. For Chris Quantock and Conan Whitehead, they're looking around off their nights with a win. And down in the commentary box, Paul Nicholson is alongside Chris Murphy. Thank you very much, Henry. Yeah, interesting to hear from Mr. P. Mr. Perfect, as we've come to know him here at the Super Series. And he has equaled that record, held for a long time by Jim McEwen. So long, in fact, it's back before we even... Grace the stage in Portsmouth. And McEwen also in this week, of course. They could meet in the finals. But the last first game leg, of the evening Chris to throw first. may be much more game significant on. than anything that's going on at the top of the table, Paul, because if Chris Quantock wins it, he puts a four-point buffer between himself and Conan Whitehead at the bottom. 59. If Whitehead wins it, it's three players on two points and seemingly battling it out the last available finals night spot. Yeah, this is huge. 82. Just imagine if Quantog does win this game, how much importance is placed on game one later tonight? 123. Just imagine if Quantog did the double over Conan. He'd go to six points with three games left. Whitehead 100. would have to win all three, and Quantog would have to lose all three. This is... Very desperate now, and this is usually when we get the best from Conan. 96. It's time to fulfill the prophecy, Mr. Whitehead. Time to start fighting back. Well, if we're doing ifs and buts, think about it the other way. If Whitehead were to win both games, he would go into his second game against Rob Grundy on Friday night, looking to go level with Grundy on points. I love this group. <laughs> I really do. It's the best group of the week. Because 59. these turns are so fast. By the way, I think you've just stumbled upon the right nickname for Daryl Pilgrim. Mr. Perfect. 100. I love that. Chris, you require 164. Well, it has been so far that unbroken streak continues. So we're going to see some quality Quanny here. Can't get a go at the bullseye. Whitehead is waiting. Eighty-three. Conan, you require ninety-eight. Gets a shot. Double twelve. Game shot. On That's the first exactly leg. what Conan he needed. Whitehead. That was lethal. A great fifteen dart leg, and it is a break of throw as well. This might be just the second leg. It's Conan for to Conan, throw first. who's averaging ninety point five one tonight. And hasn't won a game. Welcome to Champions Week. And if you think it's because he's missed a lot of darts at double, think again. 60. He's 50%. But he's only had 10 shots. If he wins this game, 4-0, 
4-1 or 4-2, despite the 100. fact he's lost his first three matches, he will be in a provisional place to qualify for Champions Night. Yeah, he doesn't really care about Pilgrim and Grundy anymore. Not at the minute, anyway. <laughs> he just wants to be in that 58. provisional spot. But then again, he can sort that out on Friday night. He's just got to get some sort of foundation. He's averaging more than 10 more than Quantock tonight. And it's purely because people have played really well against him. The doubling from Marina McKells against him was so frustrating for Conan to take. He was shaking his head at the back of the stage thinking, 57. the Dutchman's not going to miss anything. What did he say earlier in the week? Talking to Henry Deacon. Rather tongue-in-cheek. Why make it easy when you can struggle? <laughs> 60. That's T-shirt worthy, that one. Yeah, certainly putting himself through it. And those watching and supporting him. It almost sounds like a really bad political campaign. But an honest one. Yeah, 79. too honest. Chris, you require 64. That's it. And on the back of that T-shirt, it says Conan for PM. Game's oh, on the nice. second leg. Chris that's Quantock. very nice from Chris Quantock in response to being broken. He undoes the hard work of Whitehead from the Third opening leg. leg. It's Chris to throw And he first. wasn't even sure that was a break back there Game from on. that approach. Forty-two. This is a fixture that really does motor on. Conan's always had this lovely pace about his game, but Quantock is one of the fastest players to have ever qualified for a Champions League. Now watch out for the bullseye challenges on the social feeds for the Motor Super Series as well. We have had all of the players doing a bullseye challenge this week, so watch out for our YouTube channel and on our X and Instagram feeds. They will be on there in due course. 135. I wonder if anyone's going to outdo Cam Crabtree. I do follow that. I'll start doing some teasing as well. We are going to have a rather special one on Saturday for you to cap off this series, but I, I'm going to say no more. You're going to have to tune in. Is it 140. you? Uh, that would be special. But not for the same reasons. Now, Quantock's in a good position here, but Whitehead will have the first go at a finish. 99. Waiting Conan, all night for something to really get him going. Could this be it? Treble 17. Not found, so Quantock will get a go at the two data. One hundred and twenty-five. Chris, you require eighty. Take the bones out of that one, everyone. It's not the first time he's gone for something odd that would have left him on double nine. Game shot on the third matter. leg. He's not going to get a Quantock. go at it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Always me. That's the gesture from Conan Whitehead. Four flag Whitehead. is Conan to throw Everything first. Everything they go for, they hit. Game I on. swear, it's as if his opponents tonight have been throwing at doubles with porcupines. They're hitting them all. It's a stat that we don't usually do, but we might have to do it 100. at the end of tonight, which is what was Check 85. the opponent's checkout percentage. So all four of his opponents combined, what was it? Can you give me 60 seconds and Go I'll on. give it to you? Clock is 42. ticking. Well, in this one, it's two out of two for Chris Quantock. 100. In fact, we haven't seen a dart miss that double in the game. 81. Fifty-eight. Well, Paul, you've got about twenty seconds. Oh, don't you worry about that. I've already got the numbers. Before Chris Quantock even gets to a finish against Conan Whitehead tonight, including this game here, 
His opponents are 58% on doubles. 14 hits 45. from 24 attempts. That's cruel. Yeah, and it kind of proves the point. The feelings that have been evident written all over his face. 58. That That is unusual to have such a high strike rate against you from a combination of players. You can get one player that has a great game, but for it to happen with everyone... 74. I've got to say credit to Chris Cornstock here. He, he was broken in the first leg of the match. I was going to say, after that first 60, Conan, we said, don't look, Conan. Look at this. It's not going to go. Should leave himself on tops. 99. But based on what's Chris happened tonight, 40. it's going to be 3-1. It Inch continues. On the flag, Chris Quanta. If anything, it gets worse. <laughs> What's it? I mean, that's going to be 60 percent ish isn't it now? Exactly 60%. 15 out of 25. Fifth wow. leg, it's Chris to throw first. I've Game never on. seen anything like it in a Group B situation, especially on a first night, especially in a Champions Week. 96. This is Vendetta-style darts. 100% in this game. 60% against him over the course of the evening. Conan Whitehead. He's going to have to do something rather special to turn this around. And how many times have we said that tonight? That's right. Four times. Do you believe that if he does lose this match, that he has to win every game tomorrow? 135. Not necessarily. If results go his way, he might just have to win three. One hundred. He has been in these kind of situations before, but in a Champions Week, this will feel suffocating. He's even shaking his head at that 140 there. He's looking at the fact that Quantock was on 171 before, 271 before it, sorry, and thinking 100. he's not even gone for the right shot, and he's put himself in a good position. <laughs> he turns around. 91. Conan, you require 86. Can he stay in it? It's one dart of the bull. 61. And that Chris, you require is symptomatic 40. of the evening that Conan Whitehead has endured. Uh, double 10. Would make it an evening that Chris Quantock has enjoyed. 20. For once. Conan, you require 25. For once, he comes back. For once, his opponent misses. A wry smile appears on the face of Whitehead, replacing the scowls from earlier. Shot on the fifth and leg. maybe, Conan just Whitehead. maybe, there is a positive end in sight. He will now have the darts to tie this game up at 3-3. Three, three. Sixth leg, it's Conan to throw first. Game on. When you look back on Saturday, if you see one of these players lifting the trophy, 100. think back to this match. It could be one of the most pivotal in the entirety of Champions Week. 58. I'm feeling, feeling a little short change because Paul Nicholson has 41. left the, the comms box to evaluate the action at the end of the show. But last time we did that, the player at a 9 dart finish. I think this is the kind of match where we're least likely to see such a thing because this is really tense. Both players know the situation here. Whitehead may have that switch to the 18s. 56. It's a rare play, but he does like that, that switch. Dennis Priestley used to do 46. it. 46. Well, now he may have to use the 19s. 44. Okay, at least he only needs 100 to leave a nice check out. 100. Well, he should get that now at least. 
140. Brilliant. This is really good fighting, really good scrapping from Conan Whitehead. All night, he's had everything thrown at him, everything hit against 49. him. 49. He's refused. Conan, you require 120. To accept his fate. Eighteen. And that would have been a really well crafted Chris, finish. Now he's just got to hope that Quantock hasn't got a, a magical moment up his sleeve. Oh, this would be a heartbreaker. He thinks it's Game in. Shot. And, and it match. is in. Chris Quantock. And Conan Whitehead just cannot believe it. He put himself in a really, really good position on tops to make it 3-3. And then to rub salt into the wound, Chris Quantock takes out 152. Conan Whitehead, well, he throws the, the stem and fly up onto the balcony, disbelief as he waves his arms to the side. It's been a bizarre night for him, and he's going to have his work cut out tomorrow. No points for Whitehead. Quantock has doubled his win tally with that victory. He ends the night with a stunning 1-5-2 checkout and defeats Conan Whitehead by four legs to two. Did the flight hit you or hit me? It didn't hit anybody. But I'll tell you what. Everybody's been hitting everything against Conan tonight. The doubling has been supreme against him. Borderline cruelty against the former champion. And what a task he's got in his hands come Friday night. Because if he doesn't beat Chris Quantock in that first game on Friday night, then it looks like it's going to be a new champion. Well, let's have a look and see what happened this evening then because two players really ran away with the group. Bob Grundy and Dale Pilgrim both won their first three fixtures for going toe-to-toe -to -toe in the ninth game of the evening. As you can see there, Dale Pilgrim running out a convincing 4-0 Victor in that one. Let's begin then by talking about Darrell because look, we gave him the big build up in preparation for this event because of what he's done, not just in qualifying for this particular week, but what he's done elsewhere, beating the likes of Michael Smith in a pro tour setting, a pro tour environment. And credit where credit's due, he's lived up to that tag. He's played well tonight a couple of times, but in his own words, he recognized that he didn't play to his best in a couple of other games. My word, did he play well in that first game of the night. He looked really comfortable as well. But the ability to scrap and the ability to play well and put those two things together, they result in getting eight points from eight. Now, I think it's important as well that when he came up here and spoke to you that he was not comfortable being someone who's got eight points. You see him hit double 18 here with his second dart to get that 4-0 win against Rob Grundy, but... He's not going to be happy until he gets win number five. That will be an important win to rubber stamp his way through to Saturday night with Andreas Harrison. And it will also give him that record. That game will have pressure on it because when you told him about that, he wanted it. He didn't know about it. And maybe we shouldn't have told him because he'd probably get it easier if we hadn't told him. And I suppose there was a quiet determination because I asked him about... Look, is there pressure on you now because of what you did last time, because everybody's talking about you and because you were the favourite? But for some players, that can weigh large. It didn't feel like that with Davil. No, I think he's been lauded as a favourite a lot of weeks now. I think he's starting to get used to it. I think he enjoys the fact that when he goes to the Pro Tour as a substitute player without a tour card, that he can go under the radar for a couple of days. Not when you come here. He is one of the heavyweights of the Super Series. So when he comes here, expect to get pressure from us. Elsewhere, Rob Grundy has had a real breakout year in 2023. Won his first three matches. And we were talking up here on the balcony midway through about the fact that we've seen him here now for four days. And it feels like every single day he's getting better. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think throughout the course of the night, he was getting better game on game, but just ran out of steam. And I also mentioned that he doesn't have a great deal of experience of playing past midnight because of his previous exploits uh, before midnight and playing during the day in a Group C environment. So I think maybe that was a bit of a, a learning curve playing at such a late hour against one of the favourites for the week, indeed the favourite for the week. So an interesting time, but when he plays Pilgrim next, it'll be a bit earlier. Kono, I want to see this back, but we're going to show you the last leg of that match because it was a superb finish from Chris Quantock and that... Well, from the position of bottom of the table, he now puts himself in a qualification position. Yeah, this is, a, this is a rather sickening shot. Look at the background there. It's almost as if he knows that that 32 bed is going to be plucked by Chris Quantock 
and it's just a look of resignation. The night is over, he can go and get some sleep now. When he comes back, it's gotta be wrecking ball mode from one of the heavyweights of the Super Series. Otherwise, he's not gonna get his name on this thing here. Well, let's have a look at the table then and round off what we have seen tonight. Dale Pilgrim leads the way, four wins from four. He's in pole position now to join Andreas Harrison in Saturday night's final here in Portsmouth. Well, Grundy keeping close company on six. Chris Quantock on four. Uh, Moreno Miguel's on two points. Conan Whitehead on zero points. The former champion is got going to have to win, you feel, and win big tomorrow if he's going to make his way into the Saturday showpiece. Well... Tomorrow is the big day because we only know one name so far through to Champions Night and we're going to find out the final five tomorrow. Well, we kind of know that Pilgrim is close. He's going to win one of his games on Friday night, isn't he? So we can somewhat half-heartedly say that it's Harrison and Pilgrim, but I think all of the players coming back on Friday, they all have a mission. Just find a way through whatever it is whether you've got to win one game, you've got to win four or five, find a way, and then everything is uh, wipe the slate clean for Saturday because it's all very, very different when this place is going to be packed out, not just down there, but up here as well. Yeah, very quickly before we go, this is how Group C occupies itself. Jim McEwen and Sebastian Bioretsky both leading the way on eight points. Steve Wes, who's been there, he's done it. He's worn the t-shirt here at the Super Series on many occasions. He's just behind on six. Matt Dennant on four. He's got work to do. And Anton Ursland and Matt Clark, he says, are going to have to go through the card if they are to make it through to Saturday night's final. Well, I shall see you spick and span tomorrow morning. I'll be here. We shall make it a date. Right, we'll see you tomorrow. One o'clock we begin on the Super Series YouTube channel before then going live on Sporty Stuff TV from three o'clock. The race to see who is going to lift this cup is drawing ever closer. The one champion is not going to defend it in Luke Littler and another one in Conan Whitehead may well be staying the exit door in the face. But as far as the favourite is concerned, well, Mr P was Mr Perfect. He just had that winning touch.